in slow motion. Already, its comments section is seeing over 30 million active users. Facebook isn't giving up so easily, incorporating images and videos of deer, elk, reindeer, and even moose into their layout. But teens say that misses the point entirely. In fact, the site's one unwritten rule, don't post anything about the video itself. Teens say that's not cool. But with more and more people swapping over to the comments section of the slow motion deer video by the day, some trend watchers warn it may begin going the way of Facebook. I was obsessed with it for a while, but now it's just boring. I'm probably gonna switch over to Happy Fast Kitchen. While we don't know for sure, we believe Happy Fast Kitchen might refer to the Yelp page for a Chinese food restaurant in Cleveland, the new social media site where musician Skrillex recently dropped his latest album. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. It's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. Coming to you live on a Sunday. I know, you're shocked. There's not too many radio programs coming live anymore. All the consolidation in the radio industry has sort of left the weekends wide open. Free Talk Live is enterprising on that. We're on now, more than 150 radio stations across the country. And I'm, i i got to say, I'm delighted. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. You can give us a call, 855-450-3733. We'll talk about whatever's on your mind. That's kind of what we do here on Free Talk Live. It's an open line show. So, 855-450-FREE. Stephanie, um, <clears throat> yes. what'd you bring in for us? <laughs> well, something that uh, really piqued your interest, Mark. There's a college professor who has offered... She's corrupting these young, young minds full of mush. Well, she may be corrupting the young bodies. Uh, <laughs> there's a oh, college prof- young bodies? professor who has Sounds offered <laughs> her students extra credit, and this is a women and gender studies professor, offered her students extra credit if the women stop shaving their armpits and legs for the semester, which is 10 weeks, and for the men, if they shave their bodies from the neck down. Okay. And... <laughs> And this has obviously become a politicized thing because people see it and they think, wow, that's kind of messed up. Um, (laughs) You know, I I, I think that, okay, a teacher is supposed to teach. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to provide new experiences. Yep. Um, I think that it's an opportunity for people to look at another world. Um, Now, I I think that's the idea. The, I don't the see idea is a genderized world. I knew I've known plenty of dudes that shave themselves from the neck down yep. and and up and you know, all kinds of spots. Yep. Um, I don't think that that particularly is uh, you know that big of a deal. But yeah, I think that most women probably most women probably have never had armpit hair longer than you know a quarter inch or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I suppose that it's an experience. Is it a valuable experience? I don't think it's a particularly valuable experience, but I would say that, uh, you know, college credit isn't that valuable either. So why not? (laughs) It it strikes me as personal. You know what I mean? It's a personal choice about what to do with your body hair or your head hair or what clothes you wear or anything else on your body. And to um, incentivize people to do something different, even if it is to sort of show them what it's like on the other side of the gendered divide or whatever or gender norms i i get why she's doing it but is that what college has become you know like our well they don't teach much else it's it's gender studies is what she's teaching yeah so it's not of any value anyway but but don't you think that people who are taking a gender studies class maybe they would want to do that on their own voluntarily but like to involve what someone does with their body hair in their grade is a little weird to me (laughs) It's extra credit. I mean, you know, you can't go after it for giving them a little extra Yeah, but credit. if everybody gets extra credit, then it's it ends up being a detriment if you don't do it. You know, well, like I, I, the grave on a curve, I took right? a psychology. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess so. But the point is, I, uh, I took a psychology class in uh, college and the teacher offered extra credit if we participated in psychological experiments. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, and most psychological experiments are done on college students for extra credit, just like that. That's how they get them to participate. Okay. Uh, and I felt like if I didn't do it, I would be behind in the class. And that's not really genuine 
uh, it, it doesn't really come from the heart. You know what I mean? So, so and I'm going to if you, if you, have to wax psychological here for a second. I mean, let's not forget. You are a, a doctor from Dartmouth. You have uh, always performed at the very tops of your class. Mm-hmm. Um, you fe- experience a sense of lack and yeah, missing I'm, I'm an overachiever. You don't get, uh, that extra credit. It's true. I'm an overachiever. But if I was taking a women's studies class and they said, oh, yeah, you'll get extra credit if you don't uh, shave your armpits, maybe I would like to shave my armpits and legs. Maybe I want to. Maybe I... I enjoy the way it feels, sure. not having hair. Sure. Should I be penalized for that? It's not a penalize. It's extra credit. <laughs> you see? Yeah. I, it's, I, I've let extra credit go, and I can emotionally... Do, but, but You're almost making me sound like the social conservative here, but <laughs> which is really <laughs> well, bizarre. See, this, I, think, I think you hit the nail on the head here with what this is really about. This is agenda. This is about the, the pussification of... <laughs> Men, of th- this is about the destruction of society, of our God-given, I don't know. Manliness sorry, and I femininity. Do, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure this is what everybody's saying, right? This is this is the feminist agenda that's turning people- I think people... that is what people are saying. Yeah. yeah. I, I can only imagine. I mean, I think the term um, metrosexuals from the 90s, uh, this, this idea that- Guys, you know, buff their nails and uh, you buff tr- your nails. Trim their spots. I don't really do it anymore. I'm now a farmer. I don't have really, you know, the interest <laughs> to do it. I'll do it if there's a buffer around. I don't care. But, I pluck my eyebrows. Uh, there you go. I mean, you know, in the, the right yeah. spots, there's some well, hair th- that needs to go, right? I think you're making a great point, which is that, and and uh, conversely, on the other side for women, now it's a trend. Like people are saying, the full bush is back. Like yeah, uh, it's not back for me. <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> well, I mean, you could make different arguments, but yeah, uh, but lots like of different people I have think different tastes. Sure. I think just in the last couple of years, there has been a conversation in the public sphere about body hair and gender norms and uh, people be having the freedom to decide what to do with their bodies and whatever that means to them, it means to them, whether that's shaving or not, whatever gender they are. Sure. And so I think people do have the space to explore those things on their own. If it's a guy and he wants to shave his hair, he can do that. If it's a woman and she wants to grow out her armpit hair and leg hair, she can do that. I've done all of those things. Well, I've yeah, added your credit then. Right, right. But like why it, it almost seems like the college professor is kind of incentivizing or pushing the student to do that when they could just do that on their own if they, they wanted that's to. That's what they do anyway. They warp their little minds. I mean, they, that's their <laughs> job as a as college professor's job is to play with your head and reform it um, into giving you different opinions. Well, then maybe Why the, not play with your body and reform it too. Well, then maybe the issue is just college because I think you could get this education of experiencing the opposite gender norms of what you've grown up with. On your own, you could do that oh, in an unschooling job than way. This. Yeah, absolutely. You, uh, yeah. So, you was, so, guys, if some of your gal friends, you just go. If you want to experience what it's like uh, from the other side, just ask some of your gal friends to do your makeup and hair, and they will absolutely uh, whip you up into a nice evening gown, and uh, you'll have a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they should get additional credit in this uh, class. I, 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 are there a lot of guys taking gender studies at? The what guys, probably, the guys, for them, it's probably a great way to get chicks, right? Well, I was just about to say <laughs> yeah. that's exactly that why the guys that I knew in college took women's studies yeah. was to meet women. It, it certainly wasn't to get a job. Um, what, <laughs> what was the uh, college that, uh, uh, that this, this was at? Arizona State University? Okay. So that's a place where people are wearing shorts and tank tops. So it's not the, like they can hide it under their pants or whatever. What hide the uh, if they're growing out their leg hair or whatever? I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. I I gotta say that I think that I, I would love to hear other people's opinion on this, but I am uh, nonplussed mm-hmm. by uh, this this college professor's oper- uh, attempt to get uh, at press and be uh, all edgy. No, not edgy. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, I think you're right. It's not not edgy anymore, especially with the conversation about gender norms kind of opening up a little bit and people feeling I genuinely think people do have more freedom now to experiment with different ways of styling their body hair than they did in the past. Well, like, I mean, where did it even start with, you know, women shaving? Uh, I mean, that's a good I, question. I, I know where it started. Where did it start? Yeah, it started with, uh, honestly, French hookers. Mm. Um, it was a sign that you were that you were a hooker if you shaved. Ah. So that's why you know, and in France, that's that's why there was the the kind of the cultural meme going around for the past few decades, where uh, the French don't shave their armpits and all that because all of that was a sign of being a prostitute. And so I would think 
that this was actually, you know, that conservatives should be overjoyed that women will once again be hairy <laughs> and will not be, you know, just wantonly walking around as prostitutes. Uh, you know, and as far as men... If I mean, they're a real conservative, going back they, to yeah, French, uh, old-timey that's right. France. <laughs> I mean, look, if God wanted women to, to be hairless, he wouldn't have given them leg hair. They do seem to have okay. less, though. Uh, they have less, sure. But some have less. Yeah, some have less. <laughs> so that's a matter of degrees. Indeed. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think you, uh, yeah, if they want to give extra credit for shaving, <laughs> fine. They want to shave, fine. You don't want to shave, fine. Let me know what you think. 855-450-3733 here on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overexposes extends itself and spends beyond its means. Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800 800- 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have border patrols. You want to have checkpoints. You want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, I'll answer that question by reading a short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens to appear at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was about. Yes, you're poor, you're tired, tired, huddled masses. Right, you are aware of it, yes. Let them come in legally, legally. Well, get, come on, the legally, Lou. The legal is such a cop-out. No, hold on a second, because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then, bam, you're out the door. Now legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733, the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. And you can give us a call at 855-450-3733. Want to tell you how to go about getting uh, cryptocurrencies, whether you want to get Bitcoin or Dogecoin or Litecoin or Blackcoin or Darkcoin. I don't even know some of these things, Brian. <laughs> oh, some of those are very hot. Did they say Blackcoin? Blackcoin, yes. Yeah, Blackcoin is very exciting. In fact, they just completely rewrote their algorithm, and they may have solved the proof-of-stake problem. So, I mean, which we don't have to talk about what that is, but bottom line is some exciting offers from ExpressCoin, no doubt. Indeed. So go to ExpressCoin.com, and you can get uh, Bitcoin, or excuse me, uh, cryptocurrencies in a variety of different ways, whether you want to use a money order a check, or a wire transfer, you can do that. And um, that means it's going to take a little longer than using the method I'm about to, to tell you, but you can go to a credit union in your town. Now, you need to call ahead first and ask, ask if they have shared branching. So that's the key there, shared branching. If they have shared branching, they can. you can go ahead and just deposit some money right there. You'll get your cryptocurrency within... Uh, you know, a few, couple few minutes to hours, you know, I mean, I've done it and it, it happened in minutes for me. Um, I, I know that there's been some times when it's been um, within 24 hours, I think is what they guarantee there over at expresscoin.com. But sometimes you can get it faster. So go check it out. You can even do it from their, your smartphone by downloading their app at expresscoin.com. They've got great customer service and great fees. I think it's a tremendous uh, opportunity and option for the unbanked which is a growing population around the world. Yep. Uh, so I think that's fantastic. Excellent. Let's just go right to the calls. Got uh, Benjamin here. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm pushing the right buttons. Terribly sorry. Benjamin, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, Mark. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Brian. Hey, uh, Benjamin. Yesterday, Mark, uh, I actually was calling in, and while I was listening to the show, you made mention of something, and... Honestly, that's all I could think about while I was uh, while I was doing my call, which was the idea that everyone is wrong about something. Yeah, I mean, and, it, uh, it would it would take a it would take a lot of hubris to believe that you're completely right. I have a lot of hubris. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something well, that is Brian, honestly the funny part is is though we all operate. All day long, as though we're right about everything all the time. <laughs> and, you, you know, like, things that we have no business giving opinions on, we will. Because this culture of democracy and consumerism that we have, your opinion counts. Even if you're stupid on a subject. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, okay, that's, that's it. Well, and honestly, if we knew we were wrong about something, we would try to change our opinion. And this is something that I'm always... It doesn't like keep me up at night, but it keeps me up at night trying to think of <laughs> how am I, how am I wrong? What am I wrong about? What is it that I'm thinking that I'm just wrong about? And I'm not talking about, you know, is Rocky Road ice cream really the best ice cream? You know, I'm not talking <laughs> about that kind of stuff. Just whatever. And uh, I think that's something that we should all, not maybe we should all obsess about. But it's something I, I hope that people think about regularly is, is, is what I, I believe, is this thing I think, is it actually true or is it just what I think and haven't ever tested or, um, you know, attempted to see if, you know, is yeah. wrong. Well, right. you know, I think this is pretty important. And really, I don't, you know, you don't want to tell people not to think. I mean, and, and if you, even if you're wrong, uh, you know, today on the internet, it's so, look, you can make a case for anything. Like, no matter what your opinion is, if you're an atheist or if you're Christian or whatever, you can bring all this, you know, supposed evidence back and forth. But I still think it's important, no matter what evidence you have for what you're talking about, to make your arguments. But 
it's important that I think if you don't necessarily have a lot backing up what you say, that maybe you should learn to reserve judgment, not to think it. You know, I'm not saying don't think it. I'm not saying, you know, don't uh, don't think that you're instantaneously wrong. But if you don't have a whole lot going for you, maybe people should learn to reserve judgment a little more. Uh, well, I know I like to say I don't know. Like, right. When I'm asked about if somebody asks me about stuff sports teams or whatever i just go i i don't know i have no idea about those kind of things i'm the wrong person to ask yeah, it's the me smartest too. <laughs> thing to say most of the time as i don't know and i mean you really you got to continue to look at the 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 evidence one of the difficult things is is there's all kinds of topics in today's world with the internet with the the source of the sum total of all human intelligence uh, knowledge up right. to this point you can't figure some things out if you wanted to find out whether global warming is true or not, good luck f going on the internet and finding out what the truth is. You're oh, going to have you one could make hell a, of a time. Yeah, you could make a case either way. Whatever yep. you believe, you're going to be able to make your if case. If you think that if you want to find out whether uh, the you know the 9/11 towers fell because of terrorists or thermite, good luck. Good luck figuring out whether that's the truth or not. I don't know if I totally agree with that attitude. I think you can often get to the truth, especially if you know how to think and you're willing to put in some time to understand what you think. Like, I, I think it's bad to just throw up our hands and say, well, you can't know the truth, so screw it. We shouldn't even try, right? Like people say that about diet and yeah, there's a lot of confusing information out there about diet, for instance, but you can get to a truth and you can figure it out if you put some effort into it and if you approach it with the attitude that it's possible to figure out the truth well i don't think you want to go so certainly i agree with you stephanie you don't want to go so far as to say like there's i think in, in buddhism there's the the saying that you know you, no matter how many times you throw up a penny there's still the chance that at one point it won't actually fall to the ground now i think that's nonsense okay like there's basics that yeah you, you, that you don't want totally to just accept. disconnect it from reality right, like right. there is some truth i think there is objective truth out there oh sure. I think it can be hard exists, to find but, but you know i i mean okay so if i want to find out whether global warming is true or not how much time is am i obligated to put in in order to find the truth yeah zero you're not obligated to put in any any time unless it, you're interested and want to so but that's very that's very different from there being no truth though i think there is truth i just don't know what it is exactly and, yeah th there's, it's and that's discovery, perfectly fine and i may be wrong when i come to my conclusion because i've come i've taken the facts that are available to me and i come to whatever conclusion you know i, I maybe i decide i'm going to believe all the climate scientists on this and forget you well, know the other evidence uh, on the other side Mark, I hate to interrupt, but I'm going to tell you you're wrong because you're asking, <laughs> because you're asking the wrong question. The, everybody asks the question, is global warming true? Is global warming false? And really the whole idea of climate change or global warming is really like several separate questions. Whether the earth is warming or not is actually something that could be easily determined. Now, mm -hmm. whether man, man caused that is a whole other question. Mm. And then whether man... Whether it's a good or a bad thing is yep. another question, and, and then follow should up. Should we do with, anything can about man, it? Yep. Can man stop it? I mean, I can put get a boulder pushed down, start to go downhill. There's no way I can stop it, right? So you have it's it's many questions, and trying to wrap them all up into this: is it true or false? Is or is global warming true or false? Is just ridiculous. Yeah, it's certainly uh, it's it's conundrum for the ages. Thank you, uh, Benjamin. Appreciate the call. 855-450-3733, Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hoodia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex. 
plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for spring at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to herbalhealer.com and click on spring specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy. Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now. And every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked, and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. There's a treasure hunt going on at MathGate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, MathGate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to MathGate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to MathGate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at MathGate.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. That's 855-450-FREE. It spells out the word free that 3733 does. It's uh, Mark with you. And Brian. And Stephanie. You can call in about whatever's on your mind. And you can go get passports for Bitcoin at passportsforbitcoin.com. There's a lot of different reasons that people all over the world or somebody like you might want a second passport or to even renounce your citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people in the U.S. renouncing their citizenship, but people all over the world do it, whether it's a governmental intrusion on your privacy or prote- as a protest against uh, foreign policies or to protect your wealth or avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation or a refuge. You may want to get a second passport or uh, to change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportForBitcoin.com. Now, obviously, they take Bitcoin, and it's just another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom. 
passports for Bitcoin.com. I remember looking into this um, a, a bit, and essentially, with enough money, you can become a citizen of St. Kitts. And, yeah. you know, they, of course, they can get just a second passport. A lot of people want that, That's too. That's awesome. I'm yeah. glad there are places in the world like that. <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, if you, go ahead. If you have tax trouble here in the United States, they can just pull that uh, passport and you'll be, you'll be going nowhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, having a second passport is absolute freedom. And the fact that you can get it with Bitcoin, I mean, it's, it's tremendous. What, what a great service. All right. Let's go to the phones. Uh, it looks like a gentleman named Hung Like Jesus is called in. <laughs> I love this guy. Hi, Hung. <laughs> nice to hey, hear Steph from you. <laughs> Stephanie, Mark, and Brian, how, how are you people? Doing well. <laughs> What do you mean by you anyway. people? <laughs> Mark, are you offended well, by that? Well, I doubt it the least. <laughs> You're supposed to call him Big Daddy Rhino Schwanz, hung like Jesus. <laughs> All right. I'll remember that next time. <laughs> um, what I want to uh, talk about is the uh, the absolute obscene show of, I guess it would be force during the, um, during the hell of days. Um, I live in a, a town uh, northeast of uh, Atlanta. It's still considered the, uh, the metro area. Okay, and um, I was going over to my uh, to my aunt's, and she lives a, a little ways from the same county, but a little ways away. And the amount of cops that were out uh, from uh, Thursday until today, it was just ridiculous. You don't see this many cops on an on an average day, and the only reason that they were out there, to, you know, over the weekend, the holiday, is because they were out there collecting money, and that's it. Mm. Oh, if it was yeah. about safety, it would be something different, but we know. People drive every day. You don't see that many cops. So it was yeah. about collecting money from people, and it was obscene, and it just irked me. So was it uh, speed traps, or what was their uh, uh, MO? You know, it was it was speed traps, whatever they could do. You know, they would okay. force. I get, you know, it just to me, it was just blue lights just flashing all over the place. I'm, you know, I'm I'm figuring whatever they can stop someone for, they're they're going to do it. Right. Um, so here's here's my problem with the revenue collection on uh, speeding. Now, I'm not going to I'm not willing to say that you can go just as fast as you want. And it's not a problem at all. I think that there's a you know, there's there's a safe speed. And I'm, I'm not sure what that safe speed is. I think we need to sort of figure that out on each uh, stretch of highway or byway. But the system that we use to catch speeders is not a system that incentivizes going the speed limit. I don't think they even want to insist incentivize going no, to the speed and limit. And it's inconsistent. No. Right. Well, that's yeah. it's highly inconsistent. Yeah. You'll get caught once every 10,000 times you that's speed That's the or idea. Something. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So it's really designed for revenue collection and not even particularly well. If you wanted if, – if there's a safe speed, uh, an unsafe speed on a road, then a – you know, a speed trap camera, a camera that uh, you know, records speeds and sends a ticket, they've got these things all over the place, is going to be a much more consistent way of catching people that are going too fast on, on a particular road. It'll send them their ticket in the mail, which is a lot safer than pulling somebody over with flashing blue lights. I'm not advocating for, um, for these cameras. I'm just saying that the system we have... Cops are killed every year on the roads uh, right. of the United States because they're wandering out into traffic. <laughs> they're, um, people are see flashing lights. They want to look at it. They cause they're more of a danger on the road than the speeder they pulled off of it. Mark, right. Mark, don't you? I mean, come on, don't you want to pay for this protection? This stop thinking of as revenue collection. This is a fundraiser. Okay, that's what this is. <laughs> Fundraisers with guns. <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, how unsafe is it to have flashing blue light? I mean, those they always blind me and distract me while I'm driving. Right. And I, I'm a uh, volunteer firefighter. Where and where I in the town? I've seen two accidents at accident scenes. And I assume it's because rubberneckers are looking at what's going on. Mm. Oh, I wonder if I'm going to see a body. Yeah. Or whatever it is that they think they, you know, they're going to see, and they have to look. They just have to. I mean, that's what, the, that's what the flashing lights are there for, is to catch right. your attention. We and were driving the, last night, and uh, there, was, there was a situation where the car in front of us, I guess, thought that he was being pulled over by a cop who had his lights on and was coming the opposite way on the highway. And this guy pulled over blocking an exit off of the highway no. it was like people just pull over anywhere without really regard to how safe it is and if i mean i don't blame them for that because the cop might 
thinks they're trying to get away from them or whatever if they if Those they pull up too far. Those death threat. Yeah. They'll ultimately yeah. kill you if you don't pull over. If they um, think they're in a chase, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, no wonder people uh, re- react as quickly as they do. I had a police officer one time uh, scold me for too, pulling over too quickly. She's like, I almost rear-ended you. Then you shouldn't have turned those blue lights on. You know, <laughs> I knew you were back there. You turned your lights on. I'm going to pull over. Well, one thing you can be for sure, when you got some blue lights behind you, it, it's going to mean one thing, ultimately. You're going to be paying some money. That's ultimately. But um, here in uh, here in Georgia, they just pl- passed last week the slowpoke law. So not not only now do they get you for speeding, they can get you for going too slow as well. Mm, Fall in line, citizen. What, so what's yeah. the? is there a specific rule, or is it just like as slow as the police officer thinks you're going? Well, you know, I think it's a minimum. And, and Well, slower traffic is supposed to remain to the right. Okay. So if you're slower traffic, and, and, and here in Atlanta, uh, all the freeways, people just, you know, if 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 you're if you're moving slow, you're gonna get ran over, and it's it's really obvious. So well, if you get they, pulled over, you can just say, "Don't you know who I am? I'm hung like Jesus." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I do have to work. say about slow drivers. <laughs> I think that they're and they're, they're they're get on the interstate and take a look yeah, at that first. person that's going slow. They're they're bottling things up. It's causing lane changes are dangerous on the interstate, right. exactly. and every time you got to change a lane, it's causing a problem. Slow drivers are the worst, and the ones who also see blue lights and slam on the brakes because they think. That cop that's pulled somebody over is going to just stop what he's doing and come after them because they flew past. Right. Those are also the worst, too. I, I don't, I don't want to stand that. If you can see the blue lights, you're already yeah. caught. Yeah. There's nothing no. there's no yeah. and if to react stop, now. This is really— a... someone else, I'm sorry, Brian. If he stopped on the side of the road with someone else, you know, it's safe to assume that he ain't going to stop doing what he's doing and come after you. So you're probably safe. You know, for a little ways anyway. I try to get over when I see them on the side of the road because I never know what's going to happen in that car. Is that uh, driver going to get out? Is a car door going to open? Uh, I mean, you just never know what's going to happen on the side of the road. So I try to get over. Um, and that, of course, causes a problem, too. Right. And this is why I say that uh, traffic enforcement, especially speed enforcement by police officers, is more dangerous than the speeding it's supposed to stop. Definitely. They're only they're only there one out of ten thousand times. I'm just come, pulling a number out of the air. That's good. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, and it's it, they're, they're, yeah. they're not stopping the speeders. Yeah, and this is no. really why driverless cars are never going to take off. I don't think what? they're I don't <laughs> think they're ever going to let it happen because then all this revenue it's gone. Yeah. yeah well, right. they they they're losing the revenue on uh, electric cars too from uh, from gas taxes. So uh, why would they let that go? Hung like Jesus. Right. Appreciate the call. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. And you just a big smile on your face. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're amused by that name. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Let's go to Carl in New Jersey. Carl, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, on my mind is, uh, what kind of industry do you have in New Hampshire? Do you have logging, or did the EPA do away with that, or what jobs are up there? Oh, I'll answer your questions when we get back here, Carl. Thanks so much. Hold on, hold the line if you would. It's the next Silicon Valley up here. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Literally. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre-orders for Bitcoin mining equipment, only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre-orders, no waiting. Look into the AntMiner products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced AntMiners are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an AntMiner today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The AntMiner line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by AntMiners. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844-BITMAIN. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. 
That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 free press publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in june 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-453-7333. Give us a call. Talk about whatever's on your mind. Live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. I need to come up with a name like Big Daddy Rhino Schwantz. Yeah, well, you know, I, I like Mark. It's a little shorter, but uh, you know, I understand why Big people Big Mama might... something. Yeah. yeah. That you're not a Big Mama. No. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> maybe you could come up with a clever name like ProXPN, which, of course, uh, the, the phone number that you call in to talk about whatever you want to on this show is the ProXPN toll-free call-in line. But what is ProXPN? Well, ProXPN is the first thing you want to do if you are, is first thing you want to get if you are concerned about your online privacy and thus, by default, your meat space private, uh, privacy, quite frankly. Your meat space privates. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, anyway. Live radio. <laughs> so, uh, ProXPN. You can go to proxpn.com, and I want you to look into this because this is a virtual private network service, and what that does is it encrypts all of your data, metadata, everything that goes up into you know into the big bad internets, and it will keep people from seeing what that is, even if even your ISPs, you know, whatever you're doing, it encrypts. It's again, it is the absolute first thing you want to have if you want to take action, considering so many of the Snowden revelations that go on or the the prevalence of bad actors and crackers uh, around the world. You may you really want this. OK, and it works for everything, your tablet, your smartphone, your your PC. It even works on Linux, works on OS X, works on Windows. You take your pick. You want this. And if you use the code FTL20, you'll get 20% off your order. Or if you use Bitcoin, 
you'll actually get an even greater savings. Yes, they support the Bitcoin community. They support the Liberty community. This is a real Liberty organization, and they care about you. So go to ProXPN.com uh, and, and get on it because everybody should be using a VPN. Let's go to back to Carl in New Jersey. And Carl was asking about, uh, you know, we talk here on the, the show about the Free State Project and... It's a project to move 20,000 liberty-loving individuals to one state. That state is New Hampshire. And, you know, Carl might be asking for that reason, but he wants to know, what's the industries up there um, in New Hampshire? Is that right, Carl? That, that's correct. And it's in Atlantic City. We had one casino close. We're having another one close at the end of August. And I was thinking if you build a casino up there, we could take maybe 3,000 or of our own employed casino workers, hard workers up to New Hampshire. You would have to check to make sure what I'm saying is true, but I th- there is certainly a casino bill that w- that uh, that passed some legislative hurdles here in New Hampshire, and it may have gone all the way through. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but oh, okay. there are casinos. Um, you know, there, there there are types of casinos. There's gambling establishments in New Hampshire, but. Uh, you know, they tend to be sort of around. New Hampshire's, uh, as far as exports go, um, the largest exports from New Hampshire are rocks and tree sap. Uh, you know, <laughs> granite. Literally granite. Yeah, yeah. granite, <laughs> granite and uh, oh, okay. maple syrup. Yep. Okay, okay. I was just wondering how Logging that. certainly is a All big right, deal yeah. here. And uh, okay. we're home of uh, Timberland uh, Computer Solutions. Is that what, what? What's the? I'm sorry. PC PC Connections. Right. Uh, isn't like Sig Sauer and Ruger or Sig some, Sauer and some Ruger, gun yeah. fun firearms manufacturers? We make uh, we make guns here in New Hampshire. There's no doubt about it. But they make guns in Massachusetts. You have the most restrictive gun laws in America. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of tech here too. Well, I, yep. They're, okay, I don't think they're more restricted than New Jersey's gun laws. They are absolutely not. New Hampshire's gun laws are right. among the freest in the nation. Well, that's a good reason to move uh, up to New Hampshire for that. Well, there's uh, no seatbelts for adults if you don't, you know, if you don't want to. I tend to wear mine. Um, there's uh, no okay. income tax. The no sales no tax. sales tax on you know they're on out of home food dollar. There is like there's a food tax, but not a sales tax. So you know the stuff you buy out of okay. stores and stuff. No no sales tax. It's the freest place in America. I really like living here. Yeah, I mean, but I'm self employed, so I can see it's a challenge maybe for some people who work for others who want to get a job in New Hampshire. However, the Free State Project, which we are all interested in you know this is like the reason we moved to new hampshire uh to be with other liberty lovers uh they have a job page on facebook which i think is updated pretty frequently it's called uh the free state project job group or something like that where they post like several times a day different jobs that are open in new hampshire yeah well i I think a casino would be a fantastic thing to have and before people call in as many casinos as the market will bear would be right that that, uh, the problem is is the state wants to license them yeah and and or the state wants to run them (laughs) right or you have the social stigma that people think it brings in a seedy element or Mm -hmm. it does all kinds of terrible things which is absolutely ridiculous in upstate new york now new york is terrible about uh casinos and and well about any kind of legislation really but um you have the uh the the oneida nations reservation up there and they run a casino called the turning stone and they're able to do it because they're technically a sovereign nation and this the turning stone casino is one of the most high class one of the best places you could possibly ever visit it is gorgeous and they get top name acts that perform there it's way more than just a casino and that's what happens with a lot of these industries uh i mean and and they're employing Boy, they, they got to be employing half the half of upstate. You know, it, it's it's amazing. Is that? Yeah, yeah I, it has to be the entertainment has to be there because that's the only reason I'm going to and a lot right. of people are going to go to these things is to see a good show and a big name that comes through. I'm you know I'm not that interested in going to see blackjack played or yeah yeah you know, no me neither that, that kind of thing. But uh, you know. Either. But I'm just saying that the, the big sti- names, yeah, the stigma of casinos are these, you know, dark hallways and this terrible thing. By no means, they are some of the best places on the planet to have a good time, whatever your enjoyment level is. Uh, and and if Atlantic City is closing them down, yeah, please let's do it in New Hampshire. I've never lived in a world where um, casinos okay. are, are this terrible thing. Um, you know, it's it's always to me been every time I've seen a casino, it's a pretty nice place. Yeah, I agree. Me too, Carl. Well, they are. It's just you can't have too many of them. That's all. Well, I, you know. But I mean, who I, determines what's too many? Right. I mean, how many is too many convenience stores? 
Right. Well, it's too many when you don't have it when when they're empty all during the week and you don't have enough people coming to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that, that problem would take problem. care of itself as long as they were businesses that had to turn a profit, right? Because they wouldn't want to have an empty casino. Yep. Thanks for the call, Carl. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah, I mean, you know, businesses, especially big casinos, are they you know they do traffic analyses and right. analyses and they look at all these things they know whether or not generally whether or not it's a good idea to open up uh, the one thing that's very strange to me is have you ever noticed how Walgreens and CVS are always right across the street from each other yeah same with Burger King and McDonald's <laughs> why but they for, you know I don't know why I can't figure it out why, why that is true but it seems to be the case. They know their business better than I do. You don't see a lot of these things. I mean, when was the last time you saw a closed down Walgreens? It's somehow or another these they, you know they know where to put them and they know how many to put there. It's rare that somebody just would would likely say, you know what, we've got a whole bunch of extra millions of dollars. Just just throw up a big old casino here and see if it flies. That's not doing one's due diligence, and yeah. that business deserves to go out of business. Mm. Uh, you know, I think Atlantic City probably is dealing with things like, uh, you know, Vegas, Biloxi. Sure. Many states have legal. Uh, Connecticut, I know that there's uh, Mohegan Sun down there. I think that they. I think that just about every state surrounding New Hampshire has casino gambling now. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. CD element are they drawing in? The people from New Hampshire? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, too, because... Like New Hampshire is one of two states in the United States that allows for uh, porn production. Okay, yes. California being the other one. Hey, look, I don't see the state falling apart, especially like morally or, or whatever, from the from the fact that they're that it's legal to produce porn. And so, just because something is decriminalized, like say gambling would be, does not even even if you were concerned about it, that is in no way saying that that's exactly what's going to come in because it's all about, you know, social mores and all that. I I think laws myself, I think laws are generally pretty meaningless and and people either get the ones passed that they want or uh you know, again, if if there's just enough of a stigma around something socially, it doesn't matter if it's legal or not. It won't be here. So people can make a stink without having to make a law, and they can kind of get their way. Well, I, you know, I wonder when it comes to these. Uh, like, for, for instance, you were talking about the, the the porn production. Yeah, a lot of people were predicting the very worst for New Hampshire if they allowed porn production. It's been years now. Yeah, and I don't. I've never even heard of a porno uh, being produced in mm, New Hampshire. No. I haven't heard of one. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. I just obviously I don't have my ear to the ground on this particular industry. You're not looking to get, get a job. I'm not looking to get a job. No. <laughs> I don't think they're looking to hire me either. <laughs> Big Daddy Rhino Schwartz and Schwartz. They don't know what they're missing. They indeed they don't. Stephanie. <laughs> Five five four five zero three. Mark seven. at freetalklive.com <laughs> <laughs> with job offers. <laughs> 855 453 three, three. And that was kind of the thing with gay marriage, too. Don't worry. The dogs and people are going to be living together. That was one of the things. There's going to be I got hellfire. Oh, gonna, it's always I the sky is falling. to a horse. <laughs> <laughs> 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and Black Forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? 
For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 4th, 2014. Gold is trading today around $1,313. Silver at $20.92 and Bitcoin at $624.43. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Online, accountableauthority.com. In the news, the Supreme Court has decided to review a case involving American multinational corporation Halliburton and former subsidiary KBR for billing the U.S. government for services allegedly never completed. Benjamin Carter, a former employee with KBR's reverse osmosis water purification unit in Iraq, accused the military contractors of falsely billing the government for water purification services on military bases in Iraq. Carter stated Halliburton and KBR made false statements in order to get fraudulent claims paid by the government. A number of Internet service and communications providers have joined up with British civil rights group Privacy International in a lawsuit filed Wednesday against the British GCHQ. Privacy International partnered with U.S. companies Rise Up and May 1st People Link, the U.K.'s Green Net, the Dutch Greenhost, Zimbabwe's Mango, South Korea's Jinbonet, and Germany's Chaos Computer Club to sue the British government over the Tempora program and the NSA's PRISM program. According to documents leaked by whistleblower Edward Snowden, Tempora involves tapping major internet cables around the globe. All providers involved in the suit cater specifically to activists and organizers. The city of Houston is launching a partnership with local business owner John Vuong to build a new grocery store in a southeast Houston food desert. On Monday, Houston Mayor Anise Parker, City Council Members Stephen Costello and Dwight Boykins, and the Houston Redevelopment Authority broke ground on the new project scheduled to open in 2015. Pyburn's Farm Fresh Foods will be required to provide at least 25 jobs to residents in the area. Mayor Parker stated that two-thirds of Houstonians are overweight or obese, and a high percentage are believed to be uh, living in food deserts without access to fresh food. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering Pro Pure Water Filtration, the only gravity driven all in one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, July 4th, 2014. Make sure you check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Oregon Right to Know campaign has succeeded in gathering enough signatures to place an initiative to label genetically engineered products on the November ballot. The campaign filed 150,000 signatures in support of Ballot Initiative 44, which would force food producers to label GE foods sold in Oregon. In the past year, Connecticut, Maine, and Vermont have been states that successfully passed GE labeling bills. A new study by Duke University found that bisphenol A, or BPA, a toxic chemical that leaches from plastic, helps some breast cancer cells grow and can even help make them resistant to modern chemotherapy. That report from Natural News. In the Duke study, inflammatory breast cancer cells showed resistance to prescription chemotherapy drugs when BPA was present. 
The plastic chemicals rendered the drugs worthless, sparking continued growth in cancer cells. Researchers also believe BPA might be one of the underlying forces for the cause of cancer growth in the first place, with more than 5 million pounds of the chemical being pumped into U.S. products each year. After 10 days of marching to protest a new water law, a coalition of indigenous activists and organizations reached the capital of Ecuador. The organizations gathered in Quito to form a People's Assembly and develop a strategy for opposing a law passed by Congress that they say will give large corporations priority access to water resources. The coalition believes the law will lead to complete privatization of the water in Ecuador. President Rafael Correa denies the claims and accused the groups of working for an opposition party. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal, affordable high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online, massappeallink.com. And support comes from growyourowngroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, July 4th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In a dramatic scene last night, a coalition of the nation's damaged women staged a drunken, tear-soaked march on the Capitol just after 2 a.m. Jane Carmichael has more. Thank you, Brooke. The damaged women began their protest yesterday afternoon, marching on the National Mall at about 4 p.m., and then marching away furious, saying they were done with Congress once and for all. But then they came back again late last night, insisting that someone in Washington listen to them for once. The late-night protest started with tearful apologies, but quickly moved to anger as marchers demanded that Congress pass a bill, making it illegal to say you love someone and then up and leave as soon as there's one little problem. Why are you ignoring us? Stop ignoring us! Why don't you hear me when I talk to you? Wipe the smirk off of your face! No, come back! Come back because we, we think that you... We want you to care about us! I don't need to pay a therapist to tell me I'm unhappy! I know I'm unhappy! This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. It's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Brian and Stephanie. When I say it's live, yep, we're live here in the studio. Free Talk Live's produced a live program every day, every day, seven days a week for five years. I don't think there's very many radio programs. For five years? It's really been five years? I yeah. Well, if oh you count gosh. the the remember that before the internet only Sunday shows. Right. There yeah. were internet only Sunday shows prior to the Sunday show, and I don't see any reason why that shouldn't be counted. Yeah, it was still yeah. a live program uh, originating from the studio, even if it wasn't on any radio stations. It was kind of like training wheels for a Sunday program, and um, and that was five years ago. I guess it was. Wow. Yep. So there you go. Wow. It flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. You've been coming to work here a lot in the studio, haven't you? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> 855-450 free. That is the ProXPN call in line. And uh, Stephanie, you have an, another fascinating article. What do people think about rich folks? Yeah, there's been a Pew research study. You know, Pew is this organization that does polling. So yeah. they polled a bunch of people about their thoughts on the rich. And now, of course, we know that the, the rich tends to be kind of a demonized group of people. But but everybody wants to be one, too. Yeah, so exactly. This is kind of interesting. You know, like the poor will read the magazines about <laughs> the rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it's it's all very interesting what people think and I've also, they've done studies on what do rich people think, too. This is fascinating. Mm, yeah. And many times rich people uh, have a, you know, a skewed view of the world. I thought, I think that uh, they, they did some kind of study on, uh, you know, people playing a game and the, the game was like rigged their direction, like playing Monopoly, where I get to have two dice and you only get to roll one. <laughs> and like the interview at the end of the program, um, a, a large percentage, a large, a significant percentage of people thought, I'm very good at this game. 
Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you got two dice. <laughs> <laughs> you are very good at this game. The other person had uh, one leg tied behind their back. No wonder you beat them. And, uh, I mean, you'd think that people would say, well, yeah, of course I won. I had an advantage over the other person. But- yeah, you know, it reminds me, what is that That James Baldwin saying, uh, anybody that's been impoverished at any point of time realizes how expensive it is to be poor. Well, mm. you don't have the opportunity to. There's, there, yeah, there's certain things that savings that you can't take. Yeah, uh, you don't have the second set of dice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it can be difficult. I hope that I can always. I want to be rich, like uh, so many people, um, and I hope I can always remember what it was like to wash dishes and put shingles on roofs. I've done, you know, done many of the wait tables and done all of these things. Um, and did them for you know longer than I would like. It's mm. not like I did it for you know one week in my you know sophomore year at high school or anything. Yeah, there's also the illusory superiority bias, which yeah. is um, you actually mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, Mark, where you brought in some article that said four percent of people think that they're in the bottom fifty percent of intelligence. <laughs> I love that. So ninety six percent of people think they're smarter than average. Basically, is the flip at the side of that. At very least, they think they're average. Yeah. To, to, you know, <laughs> Average to ninety six percent of people believe that they're average to above average in intelligence, and I yeah. would consider average intelligence between you know in the fortieth to the sixty you know forty to sixty percent mm. in there. And um, well, that's like I think there's also other studies that say that everyone basically thinks they're middle class when they're really not. Right. Yeah. Oh well, I think the middle classers all think they're upper middle class. I yeah. Was, yes. Exactly. I was exactly. Ribbing that's right. my mother about this, we were watching Downton Abbey, um, and I, I guess in one of the like the first episode or something, one of the characters says uh, upper middle class, like suggesting that they were upper middle class. And I, my mom was always when we were when I was younger, is it always just we're upper middle class? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a washing machine in our house. <laughs> There's no air conditioning here. You are not upper middle class, lady. <laughs> I may go to a private school, but I'd live in a house that has no air conditioning in Florida. No. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually from 2012, but it's kind of evergreen and it's still relevant. Um, there's a study that fa- uh, examines how Americans believe the rich are different than other people. The rich are viewed as more intelligent and more hardworking, but also greedier and less honest. Nearly 6 in 10 survey respondents, 58%, say that the rich pay too little in taxes, while 26% say they pay their fair share, whatever the hell that is, (laughs) and just 8% say they pay too much. Even among those who describe themselves as upper or upper middle class, 52% of those people say upper income Americans don't pay enough taxes. Now, I would like to point out that if we look at income taxes, you will find the rich pay almost the top 10 percent of earners pay almost all of income taxes yeah yeah um when you look at okay so there's uh 310 million americans in 2009 144 million tax returns were filed that is fewer than half of americans now some people can file jointly so i don't know i would say that more than half americans file a tax return but of the tax returns that are filed, only half of those people pay income tax mm. because there's the income tax credit that has had a household. There's a whole variety of things out there. I oftentimes, back when I filed taxes, I we wouldn't pay. Because right. of, you know, write-offs for the business and just the amount of money we made. And, you know, we just didn't pay taxes. Mark, you're not paying your fair share. Apparently I was. <laughs> that was what they said the fair share was. And <laughs> yeah, so, well, the idea of a fair share is just so ridiculous in the first place. Fair? It's completely arbitrary. It's I think it's people have this emotional attitude that everybody else should be paying the taxes so that they don't have to pay. So everybody else should pay more. And they should get some exemption. <laughs> so uh, when you think of when slave federal, on slave federal taxes mentality. are more than half, uh, basically the Department of Defense and the um, you know, the uh, the pensions for vets and, and all the stuff that goes into it. So I think one could make an argument that the top 10 percent benefit disproportionately from import and exports, which, of course, need the oceans to be clear and the Navy to be out there clearing things out and those kind of things. So, you know, they really do use the military more than <laughs> other folks. But I, I really... It, it, it Does seems, the Navy... Is the Navy really that essential and... As far as keeping shipping Preventing piracy? They're 
pretty darn good at it. Uh, I would, you know, I'd still, I'd steer clear of the Horn of Africa, but uh, yeah. other than that, I just don't know much about this. But uh, I think there, I think it could be done other ways besides. Well, yeah, it's it's really inefficient. Consider for a second that the U.S. Navy keeps the shipping lanes clear. Why don't the upper classes of the other countries around the world pay for this? Mm -hmm. Why is it the United States upper class is the one that has to keep the shipping lanes clear? That makes no sense. And no, when you yeah, makes no sense, yeah. When you have people that benefit that that pay for things like the army and the navy and the air force and the marines, they're going to want to employ those things. Like for instance, the oil companies, they're essentially used um, the U.S. military as uh, as security when it comes to securing new oil fields and well, things like that. Well, I mean, there are other countries that I think would provide this service, but they're always, for whatever reason, that the U.S. Is, military is trusted. I don't know, but any time, like, I mean, Russian boats can go around the world just as well as any uh, could, U.S. Sure. can, and they do, and every time they show up near somebody, they freak out, and, and maybe they're just wanting to protect the shipping lanes. Maybe I mean, so I don't even think, I think your point's valid, but I'm just saying that I don't think that the world, quote-unquote, of nations would not, uh, they, they wouldn't even allow another country to do that. Yeah, I wonder, um, it, it could be. Uh, I, it, but yeah. I, I just don't, it's not fair. It's not fair for a U.S. taxpayer and the top 10 percent to be paying for to keep the world's shipping lanes open. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. So there's also this idea out there that the rich, that the super rich don't pay taxes because they know how to structure their co Mitt corporations. Mitt only pays 15 percent. Yeah. Right. Which is probably less than like me or <laughs> you, right? He is an odd case um, as far as uh, things go. And certainly they know the tricks for dodging as many taxes as possible. Yeah. But oh, like Apple, Apple creates like tax havens for half their business, which they actually they had to go in front of Congress because yep. this was such a scandal. The company, but the people that work at Apple right. here in the United States and US citizens abroad, they have to pay a tremendous tax burden mm. yeah. um, to the United States government and even with all of the dodging that rich folks do, the top 10% still pay the vast majority of income tax. What are your thoughts on this? 1-855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. That's 855-450-FREE. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, July 2nd, 2014, gold opened at 1327.90. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1375.98, 687.99 for a half ounce, or 343.99 for a quarter ounce. That's 1375.98, 687.99, and 343.99. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. 
I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind in the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Brian and Stephanie. 855-450-3733. Tell me about Modafinil. Yeah, absolutely. Um, If you are feeling fatigued, if you feel like you need some focus, you just kind of want that that extra bit of pep to get through, you know, whatever a project you're working on or you're studying, you take your pick. I want you to check out Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this enhancer, uh, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fights off fatigue, and just gives greater focus overall. Uh, a lot of businessmen around the world are talking about it. And when we say around the world, you got to understand modup.net is a world, they ship worldwide. They are a worldwide business, and Free Talk Live is a worldwide show. Okay, so it's important when you go to modup.net, look into you know, your local laws and, prescri- you know, prescription uh, requirements, et cetera. And, uh, if, you know, when you check out modup.net. So I recommend that. Use the code FTL and you can get, to, you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. And they are also, modup.net is also a big supporter of the Bitcoin community. You'll get 33% off your order if you use Bitcoin. So I want you to go to modup.net and you can use the code FTL. That's a lot of bonuses. Um, use the code FTL and you get 10 free, um, you know, pills. 10 free tablets and then right. you can use Bitcoin. You get 33% off. I mean, it's, it's really, they're doing a top notch business there and they have great customer service, by the way. And everything I've heard about the product is, is that it's superlative. Yeah, we've had uh, listeners contact us saying it's fantastic. Yeah, listeners from around the world. Let's go to Mark calling in from South Carolina. We've been talking about, uh, you know, do the rich pay their fair share and that kind of thing. Mark, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yeah, I've just, uh, just about had it uh, with, you know, with the, the federal government and the, the tax system that's in place. I'm the top 10%, and I can tell you, not a revenue problem in this country. We've never had a greater revenue stream in the federal government in our lives. It's a spending problem. And the scary thing is there's no scrutiny. And there's no accountability. I don't care if it's the VA, the post office, Medicare, Medicaid, the IRS. Name me one government agency that's run efficiently. None of them are. If you go and check them, there's probably just so much criminal mischief going on in that place. And what drives me crazy is that a law professor tell me 25 years ago there'd come a time when we'd have the have and the have not. The have-nots would outnumber us. And I'm a conservative. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. But I'm telling you, you get eight years of Hillary coming at you, and I just don't see how the, the taxpayer like myself, I can't pay any more than that pay. 
And it's a scary thought that there's no accountability, that there's no scrutiny. And they throw this, what was it, Sarah Palin say, you want a free lunch, you want freedom? Well, honey, if I get the free lunch, I still want it. And that's what scares me in this country. A lot of people with the free lunch, and they still want it, and they're going to vote the D, big D, and we're in trouble. Yeah, you know, I, I wonder, because people, you know, people who are in the top 10% and many times can take their business and go elsewhere. The world is becoming, you know, the 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 geography matters less and less of where you are and i wonder mm, whether especially with online businesses yeah yeah i wonder whether they're just you know the us is just driving the producers out well i think the numbers prove it expatriation has gone up i mean double digits it's at an in all the time past high, couple of years isn't it? i mean yeah people are running almost for their lives because yeah i think the caller's right there's no oversight on any of this stuff and these businessmen know when bad business is being done and they're getting the hell out Mark? Yeah, well, listen, I, you know, it, I'm done. I can tell you, if I can get in another 10 years and get out, I mean, I, I can't pay any more than I pay. And, and I, you know, I, I don't blame these businesses. I mean, there's no accountability here. It's like, you know what? We'll just keep, keep re- reaching into that, that, that pot, that big pot over there, that top 10%. Well, I'll tell you what, the top 10% is not silly. They're not, they're not ignorant people. As you mentioned, they're going to start moving overseas and, you know, the federal government may find some way to tax them, whatever, but ultimately people are running from it. Yeah, they're, they're already clamping down. I think they are they are making it harder for people to leave, and there's the, what is it called, FATCA that's coming into effect, where the um, foreign banks are basically just rejecting any customers who are U.S. citizens because they're going to have to collect taxes for the IRS on behalf of the U.S. government on their accounts. Well, not only is expatriation going up, but people rejecting their U.S. citizenship is going up at, at a record pace, like a yeah. breakneck yeah. pace as far as uh, numbers it's, go. U.S. is the only country in the world where if you leave, the IRS still claims that you owe taxes. Actually, I've heard stories of Canadians that have like dual American citizenship. They may not even know that they have an American citizenship, but suddenly the IRS comes to them and says, hey, you owe us money. And they're like, what are you talking about? I've never even lived in America. But because they have that passport, they claim that they you know, that they're their slave. <laughs> you know, another interesting thing that's happening is... Thanks for the call, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I totally understand the frustration of being done with the federal government in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Um, but another number that's going up is, I mentioned earlier, I said the unbanked. Right. And now the unbanked is a term that, that means uh, you don't have a bank account or you have minimized your, your you know, what's your, your dealings with the bank. Mm-hmm. And this has become uh, like kind of a... what what the financial system calls an epidemic with the poor that we were also discussing, how they view the rich and whatever. But what a lot of people don't realize is that actually the affluent are becoming unbanked now by choice. They don't want to deal with banks anymore. They want to run away from it. I mean, and partly because not just the U.S. federal government, but they see what happens in Cyprus where your accounts just, you know, the stuff just gets taken. I mean, taxes is involuntary as it gets, certainly. But uh, when when governments can just yank money out of your account, uh, that, that's that's even a whole other level, and uh, and that's that's happening. And and would it happen here? Yeah, absolutely. Well, cryptocurrencies um, are definitely going to make it easier for people to be unbanked, rich or poor. Yep. And everybody, you know, the banking system is a system of controls. Yeah. It is a system that governments are well entrenched in, and you don't have con- when you give your money to a bank. By its definition, you no longer have control over it. They can decide who they want to, you know, if they want to give it to the federal government, because the federal government sent them a piece of paper that says, oh, yeah, we'd like this money in this account. Bam, it's gone. You don't have it anymore. Um, If they want to shut down your account for any reason. I mean, you know, like you said, with U.S. citizens around the world having a very difficult time banking. Yep. I think that this is another reason why cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, like Bitcoin, are really going to take off over time. You can currently, we we, we saw a family come to Porkfest that did all their business along the way in Bitcoin. I think they had two, two, like a toll and, you know, a couple of other things. But um, they basically were able to do everything through bitcoins and this is fascinating people can do this today live on bitcoin what's it going to be like in three years when the federal u.s federal government no longer has its most powerful tool the federal reserve note to manipulate and and to use as a method for you know uh, control what what's going to happen i have no clue but uh, i I think we can look back in history when gold was a currency and, you know, like the Middle Ages and um, that sort of thing. 
kings still fought wars, but they had to they had to tax in order to get it. They had to be in a um, you know they had to have positive cash flow and, and things like that. So uh, it seems like you're going to see a lot of benefits to me, like a, a safer, peace, more peaceful world when it comes to crypt- cryptocurrencies. It could just be my, uh, you know, thoughts on the. I think process. that'll. I think you're right. Yep. Your your thoughts. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Free talk live. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Spring time is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. It's now been seven days since a group of hikers went missing in Maine's Acadia National Park, but rescue crews there are still holding out hope of finding them alive. Autistic reporter Michael Falk is on the scene there. Michael. Hello, Brooke. My socks got wet. That cameraman gave me new socks. I am fine. That's good, Michael, but what's the situation there? The names of the hikers are Casey Allman, Brian Emery, Ashley Thorson. The hikers were last seen 174 hours ago. Since then, three very big storms have hit here. There's a 1.24% chance that all of the hikers are alive. Why are you looking for the hikers? Well, we're still hopeful that we might be able to find them. There's been a break in the weather, so we're hoping that. Over the past seven days, the average high temperature has been 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Over the past seven days, the average low temperature has been 6 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So we did another sweep of the park from the air, but we didn't see anything. Without shelter, the human body can withstand temperatures this cold for a maximum of three hours. Is there shelter in the forest for the hikers? Not that we know of. They're frozen. Well, we like this. This is the Onion News Network. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free 
Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can give us a call, talk about whatever's on your mind. We have been talking about attitudes concerning the rich here uh, this hour on Free Talk Live. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you do that way better than I do. <laughs> Mark has an attitude. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I wish I was rich. Um, there will be some rich people at the North American Bitcoin Conference, though. People who have uh, the Bitcoin, Bitcoinerati, those who have uh, gotten rich in cryptocurrencies. It's going to be at Chicago's McCormick Place South Building, July 19th and 20th. So coming up real soon. Wow, it is soon. We're going to have to get ready for another trip. Um, you are, <laughs> not us. Right. That's right. <laughs> I think it I, was too soon after Pork Fest, but have fun. <laughs> Ian and I, well, they, they did specifically uh, plan it around Pork Fest. They knew better than to plan it oh, at the same right? time oh. as Pork Fest, yes. Who so organizes wisely. this one? This is uh, Mo Le- Levine. Levin? I'm not, I think Levin is how, how he pronounces oh, gotcha. it. Oh, gotcha. And he did the one in South Beach. What was really awesome is he, he was kind of expecting 500, 600 people to show up. 2,500 people showed up. Mm. And the amazing thing is everything still went off with uh, you know relatively no hitches. I, I was that at, is impressive. I was in, involved as emceeing there. I happened to be going through town. My wife and I were going to uh, take a vacation. I thought, eh, a Bitcoin conference, I'd like to I'll go a day early or whatever and check it out. And I was, you know... They asked me if I'd do some stuff. Happy to do it. And it was a lot of fun. There's, I heard there were women in gold lame and nothing else there. I believe that there were some women dressed in that fashion, yes. Um, but I think they did it with their own accord. Yeah. I don't know if they were like booth babes. <laughs> well, or I'm just saying, you don't know what you're going to see at one of their events. You I, I can, you do know some, some things you're going to see at, at the events. For instance, you're going to see Kathy Reisenwitz uh, from Young Voices, Tony Gallippi from BitPay, Roger Veer, better known as Bitcoin Jesus. Can't wait to see Roger. Charlie Lee, the creator of Litecoin, Jeff Berwick, the dollar vigilante, Trace Meyer, the Armory Wallet. We got a chance to, to chat it up with uh, Trace at another Bitcoin event. Didn't yeah, we? it was one in New York. Yeah, that was, a, that was a lot of fun. You can get your tickets now, btcchicago.com, to get your Bitcoin, or excuse me, get your, you can pay in Bitcoin um, to get your tickets for the North American Bitcoin Conference, first Bitcoin conference in the Midwest area. I think there's going to be there's going to be a lot of people there doing business, hiring people, networking, that kind of thing. Is Mo a libertarian? You know, I haven't asked that question. Do you, what do you think? I would assume that people who are involved in Bitcoin, but I, you know, I could be wrong. Well, it's not a safe assumption anymore. I'm just curious. Well, he certainly invited Jeffrey Tucker, um, Trace his, Mayer. His, I Trace mean, he's Mayer, certainly a libertarian. Mm-hmm. Um, Roger Veer and a variety of, and uh, Jeff Berwick, yeah. a variety of uh, very strong liberty voices there. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but then again, Mo's a businessman. He would invite them if he thought people would come to see them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and because he's a bus- businessman, he's more likely to be- believe in the ideas of liberty. So there you go. You can go get your tickets at btcchicago.com. Come see us, Free Talk Live, performing our very first remote broadcast in the Midwest. Sweet. All right. Well, speaking of business people. Uh... <laughs> well, you know, if I can real quick. Yeah. I, I mean, this kind of fades out from the Bitcoin thing. But uh, I, I'm... Very curious to hear what people, how they see the rich. But Bitcoin really has made a lot of people that, you know, normally would not have under the general scheme of things become incredibly wealthy. And they're incredibly wealthy. And you know what? I don't think you know it. Like, I mean, I think you might see people who you would, because, I mean, commonplace, people expect the rich to be wearing Armani, you know, and and all this business as to where you might see guys wearing jeans and T-shirt Walking around at this stuff, you know, they they might even who knows they might even smell or something like that, and they could <laughs> no seriously. If and, I was rich, I would totally walk around wearing whatever I wanted and not showering. No, right, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm just saying that you know they could be millionaires, and you have no idea that they are uh, you know within maybe even yeah. the, you know hell they might even be in the one percent. Yeah, this was kind of how it was in Sarasota, Florida. Um, so, you know, people will, many wealthy people will move down there and they'll, you know, they're going around and button up short sleeve shirts, um, that have, uh, you know, the Hawaiian patterns and that kind of thing on them and right. shorts and, and dockers or flip flops or whatever. And that's how everybody dresses Yeah, from people who, you know, sort of lower middle class on up to upper middle class. I'm just talking about men here, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm certain that some women do, but, uh, they, you know, just 
that's it. Did I say Dockers? I meant like top siders. Um, dock, mm-hmm. sure. dock shoes, deck shoes. Yep. Sure, but I think that's an important point to bring out, I think, is that most people don't realize this, but the, the bulk of the rich from the top, top, top 0.000001% uh, to more within the 10%, you don't even know who they are. I think it's true, and I hope that I mean you got to consider what it must be like. You, you, have you probably keep, want privacy because everybody wants something from you, right? I mean, what would that be like if you if you you know if you have the that hanging over your head? Um, for instance, uh, we had Patrick Byrne from Overstock.com yeah. on the show last week when or whenever it was when we were Porkfest week before last. Yeah, last week. And I can imagine that at Porkfest he had a certain amount of people that were sort of circling him. I know I was um, for to wanting to talk to him about you know a business deal or whatever it was their going concern was and also you're going to have those relatives that are like hey i'm related to you don't you owe me some money for because because of that <laughs> yeah. do, do are you not obligated i shouldn't say oh are you not obligated to give me some money because i'm related to you and uh, you know i don't want to have all those conversations all the time yeah 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 absolutely i'd hide well <laughs> speaking of which i mean that actually ties in pretty nicely to the next part of this article. So it's a Pew study about what people think about the rich in quotes. Um, The overwhelming, this is really interesting. The overwhelming majority of self-described middle and lower class Americans say that they admire people who get rich by working hard. Yes. 92% of uh, middle class and 84% of lower class people said that they admire people who get rich by working hard. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would like to get rich not necessarily by working hard, but by providing something of value. And actually, it would be great if I didn't have to work hard to do that, <laughs> you know? Well, I, I think what, okay, so that's probably just terminology. Um, what they mean is is that I th- there are three types of rich people. There are the people that provided something of value, whether mm-hmm. they worked hard to do it or not. Yep. <laughs> they provided something of value to the marketplace that people wanted, and they profited from it. In some cases, it's intellectual property. In other cases, it's just, you know, a business they ran. Um, There are people that basically through government connections, using the coercive system known as the state, insider trading, a whole variety of things, essentially manipulating the marketplace Mm. um, in an unfair fashion, have become wealthy. Those people, I don't think too many people respect no. Right? Yeah. Some people are really politician worshipers and people are certainly attracted to power. But the fact that they're attracted to you doesn't mean they respect you. Sure. And the third are, you know, the Paris Hiltons, people who inherit their money mm-hmm. and they uh, the, most people don't have a lot of respect for them. Essentially, they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever. And I think that those people are they're doing something in the marketplace, which is to say they are. Uh, they're voluntarily creating a black hole in the universe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they're voluntarily, um, you know, moving money from the upper classes to the lower classes because generally the children of wealthy, successful people are not. They don't. They 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 haven't had the same experiences to be good at handling money, so they tend to be bad at handling money. I was gonna and they say, just, you know, they, they spend they spend too much and and get too little for it. Yeah, I was gonna say I I could respect someone who inherited money and kept it or grew it because that actually does take some intellect and work, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, it's I, like absolutely. the default is kind of if you inherit money, then you're gonna lose it or it's gonna slowly disappear unless you know how to manage it and keep it. So. I was I had mentioned Downton Abbey in the um you know in, in a previous segment I've been watching it with my mother it's a good one good show for that and she uh, you know we were we were talking about the fact is this happened a lot with British aristocracy they would marry Americans who wanted a title who were wealthy and couldn't get a title you know the US constitution prohibits titles um they couldn't get a title and the only way they could do it is marrying something they, they wanted it so badly these wealthy people in new york and that sort of thing all i'd like to be is a duchess you know <laughs> okay <laughs> can sell you that at Sealand. They, they, they can now. Yeah, or you yeah. could just yeah. declare it yourself. Yeah. Yes. Duke Big Daddy Rhino Schwantz. That's Free Talk Live now declares you royalty. <laughs> 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. 
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com this alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. The live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. That's uh, 855-450-FREE. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. We have links there for Amazon, which we get a nice big cut from. Walmart, which we get a slightly less. but hey, Walmart? 
Yep, I believe we have Walmart.com there. Wow, now, I had no idea. Go check it out because I, I can't really do it on my laptop right now. But it's shop.freetalklive.com, also Newegg. And oh, Newegg, love Newegg. They yep. just started accepting Bitcoin. Midas Resources, uh, which you can get gold and silver, and a variety of other retailers there. Please, before you do online shopping, stop off at shop.freetalklive.com. See if you can get it there because, uh, you know, a not insignificant portion of our meager income here on Free Talk Live comes through there, and we really appreciate it. It's shop.freetalklive.com. Stephanie, what do people think about rich folks? Well, they have a lot of opinions, some of them kind of conflicting. We just talked about how people seem to admire rich people who get rich by working hard. And then we kind of talked about, is hard work a virtue in and of itself? I don't think it is. You know, I don't think that has anything to do with it. I don't think it's actually, did they work hard? I think it's all attitude. And if they, if the rich person or the celebrity or whatever that's there, if they come off with this, and, and I don't mean being like a, a jerk, but just if they come off with this attitude, like somehow they are doing so much for the planet, and yet they're really just, all they did was create a service that ships fresh underwear to you every week, okay? <laughs> You're I, talking about the startup culture? It, well, yeah, Valley. startup culture, not just that, but I mean, all, all across the board, like Kim Kardashian, like w- really, what what exactly are you offering to society? You know what I mean? And so I think that's, I don't think it's the fact that she was born wealthy, okay, or that and, and that she didn't work for it. It was that she's just vapid, you know, and that that's I think that's what actually rubs everybody wrong and they don't know it. Is that it's the attitude that some of these people come off with. It has nothing to do whether or not they worked hard or not because working hard shouldn't even be like a respectable virtue per se. I mean, I work hard, you know, I know you work what hard, is the, Stephanie. What I know is Mark the, works hard, but the attitude that you're talking about is it like they feel entitled to attention? I don't know if it's that they feel no. It's that they they have uh, they have an over importance, an aspect of over importance. Uh, they have well, an attitude of over importance. Once you're born with money, um, I mean, imagine I, I, you know we're going to spend all of our lives trying to acquire enough money to be able to survive the portion of our lives that we choose not to work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, basically acquire enough money to retire. retire. Some people will retire earlier than others, uh, but. That's what we're going to do. That's what life, to some extent, is going to be about. Hopefully, it's the things that occur in between that time. But, you know, I mean, all in all, that's what you're going to do. A lot of people, you know, these wealthy, you know, these uh, heiresses and heirs, they're born with enough money that they never have that driving force isn't there. So then they have you have to decide what is it that their life is going to. They have to figure out what is my life going to be about. Some of them wisely choose it will be about helping other people um, to make a better world. Some of them will, uh, you know, do the, you know, less admirable but still interesting act of I think I will jump off of tall rocks uh, with a uh, flying suit on, or <laughs> jump out of airplanes, or downhill ski. You know, like they get very good at some particular adrenaline pumping sport. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you, know, yeah, right. you, you make those Red Bull commercials look awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, you're, you're providing something. And then there's those that are like, I need to be more famous. Uh, I think Paris Hilton's been accused. I don't know the, the, the facts of this, but I think she was involved in releasing her own sex tape that kind of uh, bumped her up the old ladder of, uh, of popularity. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. And so you have Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian who are famous for being famous. And, you know, the... The uh, TV shows that are what are these the documentary the they're the, famous for being attractive too don't you think yeah I mean well <sighs> yeah but even then I think people know that's bought and sold but this is I mean this is my point is that they no one wants to work hard really yeah no Nobody no one wants, wants to, to. <laughs> so to say you hate people because they didn't work hard that's that's contradictory on every human being's mind and that's why I don't think it's true it's not that they have the problem that they didn't work hard it's that they're just like I said. They're they're vapid, and they have a public over important spectrum that is just off the charts. Uh, and and so I don't think it really has anything to do with whether or not they work hard. You know, and I think that I think people do um, experience a certain. There's a certain amount of backlash just for why am I being confronted with this person? You know, this person provides nothing to me, and this will happen in uh, like sports, for instance. You know, some people value baseball, some people value tennis, some people value soccer or football. Well, what we're hearing a lot in the United States is jokes about 
soccer players. Um, you, know, like, oh, you know, real sport or whatever it is they say about uh, people that play soccer. Yeah. Uh, or football or wherever you're from. It doesn't football. matter to me. Um, you know, and <laughs> here's some news for you. I'm about as interested in your soccer players as I am in your football players and your baseball players. Mm. So, you know, I try not, I don't get all bent out of shape. And, you know, acting, for instance, people get all bent out of shape about actors. This is a relatively meager skill, folks. People get bent out of shape about celebritarians. You know, there are certain people that get treated, you know, differently at Porkfest or whatever, just because they're famous, they write a blog or whatever. And really, they're just people. Like, just like you and me, they're all just people. I mean, actually, I think if you're now, famous... A libertarian is a person who, in the, the, oh, liber- a famous in the libertarian, libertarian sphere... <laughs> um, uh, can you name a few of them for me? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, Stefan Molyneux. See, yeah, he's uh, a big one. Yeah. Now, yeah. The man is a very dynamic public speaker. I've sat through his stuff. Um, you know, he does, he does good, good stuff um jeffrey tucker another good i was gonna example. say jeff tucker i get sure I, I get a little bit like when i see him Ooh, it's jeff tucker i do, you know? I, do. I get the vapors <laughs> a little bit um and uh, you know jeff but Tucker's- you know what happens though is that these guys like you like we're saying they're still human beings and you know what you can still tell them to screw off <laughs> you, you can. can you can tell them to take a hike and it's okay but what happens is is that when you do these celebritarians uh their their followers you know they they go nuts and, and I mean, it's it's insane. Why you doesn't know? that happen on our Facebook page? I'll tell you, we must not be celebritarians here on Free Talk Live. Uh, not right. enough, I know. I think it's because um, we have, like, more people on the show, and you're, like, one person here won't allow another one to put on airs or anything well, like that. But we're also down to earth. Like, Ian, That's what I mean. especially yeah, but- Ian says all the time, and you do too, Mark, like, hey, we're just people. You know, yeah, but we host a radio show. But this show, unlike a lot of these other venues where it's like a singular person, and hey, I host a podcast where I'm a singular person on it. Okay, but it allows for opposing viewpoints, and so I don't think it allows for people in their minds to raise people up to that level of worship or, or celebritarianism. I'm sorry mm. uh, that that you know that that comes with that. So I think that's the difference with Free Talk Live. You know, and I do appreciate when people call in and make good points, um, good and reasoned yeah. points as far as, you know, what we're doing wrong here on the air. I think some of them, um, you know, some some points that have been raised over time, it's like, you know, what's the, what, what, that, that's stupid. That makes no sense to me. Um, but others, you know. Yeah, I think you guys do listen to critics when they have something to say, even if they're saying it in a kind of mean way. I try to because I assume that just because you're upset doesn't mean you're wrong. Yeah, sure. But I can tell you that your point is going to be better taken in life, and this is true for me and everybody everybody around. Your point's mm. going to be better taken if you can keep your voice level yes. and relate to the person the whole time. You have to yeah. consider the person that you're speaking to um, You know, might be wrong, but you're wrong about things too. Mm-hmm. And we have to be gentle with people. We're all just trying on new ideas and trying to figure out this world. Uh, the truth is being exposed minute by minute, and at some point we will all have the truth, but it isn't going to be in our lifetimes. Mm. So that's what my hope is. Yeah. By we all, I mean hu- the human beings who happen to be alive, I suppose, <laughs> will have the truth. That's an amazing thing to think, that the, the truth will be known by everybody. Because I don't know what, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of different ideas. Does conservatism work? Does liber- liberalism work? Do, uh, you know, is the, the is man causing the globe to warm? Isn't he? I don't know. I don't know the answer to any of these <laughs> questions. Um, well, we're getting a little abstract now, so why don't we move on with this article? <laughs> okay. The, the next point's kind of interesting, actually. Uh, for all this talk about money can't buy you happiness, it really does seem like there is a correlation between um, happiness, health, and satisfaction, and having more money because, uh, let's see. I, I have not been able to pay my bills in my life, and that's a very bad feeling. Yeah. You have to get good at meditation, you yeah. know, like, um, you know, <laughs> like you have to be pretty good at these things and not, in, uh, you know, if you can't make the bills. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, today I don't have that problem, but, you know, when we were first starting out here on Free Talk Live, revenue wasn't coming in the way it is today. Mm. Uh, we weren't on 150 radio stations, and, you know, I'd still like to see revenue doing better, then we'd be able to expand more and, you know, provide more jobs and, and those kind of things. But I can pay my bills. Mm. Well, uh, 29% of those in the upper class said that they frequently experience stress, while 37% of middle class and 38% of, uh, oh, sorry, 58% of lower class said that they frequently experience stress. Mm. That's a pretty big difference. So uh, money does buy happiness, or at least a little to bit. A, to an extent, yeah. 855-450-FREE. What do you think about rich people? 
855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, July 6th, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.15 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,321 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $634. The AP reports, Egyptian judicial officials say a Cairo court has upheld death sentences for 10 members of the banned Muslim Brotherhood and sentenced 38 others to life in prison, including the spiritual leader of the group. All 10 Brotherhood members whose death sentences were confirmed were tried in absentia. All 48 people were found guilty of inciting violence, attacking security forces, and blocking a main road north of Cairo last year, according to an official who spoke on the condition of anonymity because he was not authorized to speak to the media. Saturday's verdicts are part of an ongoing crackdown against the Brotherhood that began after military's ouster last year of President Mohamed Morsi, who was a member of the Brotherhood. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. The BBC reports, the director of a biopic about singer Greg Allman and two of the film's producers are facing involuntary manslaughter charges. It follows a fatal train crash on the film set in southeast Georgia in February, which led to the death of camera assistant Sarah Jones. A grand jury charged Randall Miller, producer Jody Savin, and executive producer Jay Sedrish on Thursday. Jones, who was 27, was hit by a train on the first day of filming the movie Midnight Rider. Seven other crew members were injured in the incident, which saw the camera assistant fatally struck after the crew placed a bed on the railroad tracks in Doctortown, where filming a dream sequence. 
It is understood that the crew was expecting two local trains to pass through, but a third had arrived unexpectedly. A warning whistle was blown, but they had less than a minute to remove the bed from the track. Miller, Savin, and Sedrish are each charged with involuntary manslaughter and criminal trespass, according to a statement from the local district attorney, Jackie Johnson. The prosecution alleges filmmakers had unlawfully and without authority entered onto the train tracks after receiving prior to that entry notice from the owner that such entry was denied. The manslaughter charges against the film team could bring a possible sentence of 10 years in prison under Georgia law. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Bloomberg reports Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko promised to continue a military offensive against separatist rebels after his forces retook a key insurgent stronghold. Recovering Slovyansk in the battle-torn eastern part of the country is the biggest victory so far in Ukraine's anti-rebel campaign, with Poroshenko giving orders to raise the Ukrainian flag there. Poroshenko said he would tighten the circle around the insurgents in the east. The offensive has already taken large swaths of the territory. Poroshenko said in a statement on the president's website, This is not the final victory and no time for fireworks. This is the beginning of a crucial moment in the combat against insurgents. Clashes between the rebels and Ukrainian forces continued in the east, which borders Russia, including a fight for control of the Donetsk airport. There was no word on when internationally sponsored peace talks may resume. Russia denounced the intensified Ukrainian military campaign, with the foreign ministry pointing to the heavy civilian toll, power shortages, and destroyed infrastructure as a result of the offensive. The reliance on the armed forces and preference for ultimatums and ever new demands by the authorities in Kiev contradict an agreement reached by top diplomats from Ukraine, Russia, Germany, and France. French President Francois Holland and German Chancellor Angela Merkel sought to step up diplomacy aimed at reinstating the ceasefire. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to friends, colleagues, and complete strangers, anxiety-ridden man Timothy Gibula is rightly ashamed of every single thing he does, with mere acquaintances saying they're constantly judging Gibula at every moment, just as he suspects. Tim's the kind of guy who's forever second-guessing his behavior, as if everyone's constantly scrutinizing him, and he's completely correct. We all are. We can spend entire afternoons picking apart Tim's taste in clothing and his receding hairline. It's honestly all we do when he's not around. Anytime he uh, awkwardly says excuse me when he's waiting in line for milk or sugar, uh, anytime he fails to make eye contact with me when he asks me for the Wi-Fi password, not only do I notice these things, but I use them to judge him fundamentally as a human being. A three-alarm fire that tore through a family home in Newark, Delaware early Saturday morning tragically claimed a half sleeve of Oreo cookies that were trapped inside a cupboard. At the time of the blaze, the residence was occupied by Mike and Sheila Donlan, their three young children, and six delicious chocolate sandwiches cookies, all half dozen of which perished in the intense heat and towering flames. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Brian. And Stephanie. When I say we're live, we're live seven days a week from 7p to 10p Eastern time. I don't know what that, I can't, I can't rattle off all the time zones Free Talk Live's heard in because it's heard in just about all of them. We've had calls on this show from every continent except Antarctica. By the way, you people in Antarctica that are listening, you scientists down there doing whatever tests you are that are listening to Free Talk Live, please, one of you, just give me a call so I don't have to say every continent except Antarctica. 855-450-FREE. Let's go to the phones and the fun. It's James in Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, if I don't like what I hear on Free Talk Live, Mark, I don't change the channel. I call and challenge you guys to think a second time. Excellent. For real. 
and I was reminded earlier today uh, on our LRN of something, the first thing you ever said in response to something I, that the first thing I ever called in to Free Talk Live about violence begetting peace. And I, I, I mentioned that I, had, I was defender of the dropping of, of the two bombs that decimated the evil empire of Japan and ended the war for good. Mm-hmm. And then Japan ended up growing up to be a peaceful, loving country and prosperous and all that. And uh, because the army stayed, they never got overrun by China, who most definitely would have taken their anger and vengeance out on a, a country that literally committed a million rapes and murdered millions of people. You mean uh, Japan? On, yeah, yeah, Japan. The, the rape of Nanking. Hundreds of thousands of rapes. No, they committed hundreds of thousands of rapes. Not just the rape of Nanking. They raped 80,000 people in Manila only a few months before Fat Man was dropped on Hiroshima. 80,000. A few months okay, before uh, in Manila? I thought they had, uh, yep. uh, I thought that they uh, they had been bro- bombed out of, uh, I've been Nuremberg, was uh, a friend of mine landed and they you know, jumped bombed. on Nuremberg. They were bombed. Several months. Okay, they, several months. They, you said Manila a few months, it seemed like. Living hell yeah, okay. I'm Manila sorry, I got to. 1945. Manila, was, let me just clarify for the audience who doesn't know. Manila was basically firebombed by the Allies, United States and Allies yep. in early of 1945. And the Japanese soldiers that survived took it out by raping every woman they could. Literally, yeah, in the tens of thousands. No, no doubt about that. Um, do you are are you aware so, that uh, I, I, that the United States wanted that the Japan asked the United States to come to the bargaining table about the uh, oil embargo? I, I, of, of course, I know we didn't give them war supplies. I know the total war machine that the evil empire Japan was in 1941 before they. Bombed, uh, bombed Pearl Harbor. Well, they were a pretty big war machine in the World War I when they were on the same side as the United States, too. That, that we're not talking about that, but if you want to talk about that— well, World War, stuff, You can't I'm talk about that. World War II without talking about World War I. It's not possible. I know that uh, it's fascinating that nobody ever says the Versailles Treaty led to the Japanese invading Manchuria in 1931. Because Japanese, the evil empire of Japan, speaking of World War I and World War II— Japan started World War II. Most people don't even realize that. And they did it, and they got away with it for years. And no wonder why Hitler thought that he could get away with invading the Sudetenland, the Rhineland, Czechoslovakia. Because nobody think, nobody did anything about Japan doing what they were doing. Right. Nobody did anything about Japan. That's because so, uh, Empire was, was a, um, a normal way of being back then. Right now here in the United States, uh, you know, now we look at we look back at wars, wars of acquisition. But, I mean, the whole West, where you live, was stolen from people in a war of acquisition. And there oh, were they raped? You better believe they were. Fascinating. Can I can I then I may respond to that? Oh, I'm sorry. You're, aren't you getting a chance would... to talk? Uh, yeah, I want to respond to your fixation of always going further back in history and saying, well, they did it too, we did it too before them. Okay, I, uh, Mark, I live in a beautiful town on the outskirts of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, where in one direction, in a, min- in a few minutes' run, I could be on what's called the res, and in the other direction is America's roughest sheriff who lives on a hill in, in a nice gated community. Okay, it's fascinating because the res. They have a much higher standard of living now than they ever did before the white man came to town, and that is a fact. Now, <laughs> so, I don't want to talk so, about it. So we've, uh, we've shoved those savages into— it, it, years ago that <laughs> Yeah, it was any, good for them to put them on the reservation. I don't defend, <laughs> anybody, that, I don't defend anybody that committed murder 150 years ago, but uh, 238 years after the Constitution was signed in a declaration of war— we live in a much better place than it was before our ancestors. But I'm talking you about You really Japan. can't compare it, though. I mean, Europe, which you didn't did. have... Con- I'm not comparing them. You're the one that compares them. I, well, what the point I'm trying to make is Europe is just about as nice as what, you, you know, Phoenix, Arizona. There's plenty of nice places in Europe, and they didn't yeah. have those same wars of acquisition. You didn't have to conquer right. native peoples there. So I think that it's yes, pretty fair to say Europe, you don't need to slaughter people to do it. I'm not advocating slaughter. Well, you are saying that, that we did we, we did kill those savages into uh, in, into civilization, though, right? I didn't. Neither did you. I know that ancestors of people, some of the people that live in my town, yeah, some of their ancestors committed murder against Indians. I'm not defending it. But I am saying that we still, warts and all, just like Mark Edge's life, warts and all— uh, uh, again, I don't believe you're a murderer, right? You were wrongly right, convicted right. of being a, a witness to a murder, right? Something like that. Is that yeah. what you say you were? Uh, yeah, something like that. 
Again, I've already said I think you're a decent human being trying to do what's good for the world every day you wake up, in spite of the people you hang out with, Mark. <laughs> but I don't, I don't dwell on your being having been a bear witness. I don't you know, dwell on it either, a, Mitt. A, a, you and I disagree on a fundamental on point. Americans did 150 no, years ago. No, I'm not. And I'm not talking about that. Wit. I am. Yes, you, you and okay. I disagree on a fundamental point. You believe that you can kill your way to peace. I do not. I simply put other points for you to think twice on in front of you, and right. you think that it's somehow me baiting you. No, sir. I just disagree no, 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 that you can't okay. kill your way to Wait peace. Okay, so you disagree with me then that Japan and Germany and South Korea and on and on and on, countries that are occupied by United States American soldiers who did commit violence to get there, and they stayed there, and there is no more violence in those countries, and they're rich and prosperous. Again, Japan was not overrun by Chinese, Korea, or Philippines after uh, we dropped the bombs in Japan. In fact, our soldiers Why stayed there. Why is it so important for him to convince people of this point? Well, I think that it's. I think it really it's is. It's, uh, it, it would be a. It is if, a very if he's right, because my dad was alive when all this happened. Right. And he could have None of it's going to bring your dad back. I'm sorry, James. Dad. He's he's gone. You know. About, you asked a question. I'm answering a question. How do you know if he's gone? Oh, I did mention he's gone. You he's said he was there. dead. Forgive me. I guess you remember that. Right. Not today, but you remember. Good for you, Mark. My point was, you. The first thing you ever said to me was that Truman dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki to scare the hell out of the Russians. Really? Do you know who Victor Davis Hanson is? I don't. I'd have to look that up. You don't know who Victor Davis Hanson is, the famous eminent historian of Stanford. Okay. And I a, don't. a big Republican commentator. All right. I'd have Eight to look it up. Eight years ago on talk radio, I asked him that question because this is not something I hadn't heard before, just like the McCullough memo blaming the, the uh, uh, setting up the Japs because Roosevelt saw some memo a year before the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor because the you Japs wanted You don't think Roosevelt wanted, wanted war? That's why they no, I don't actually. I see. I really. I, I, I also years. fundamentally disagree with that. I, I, I disagree I, with that. I'd, I'd like to ask a question with the premise. Well, no, no, hold on, hold on. War on whom, by the way? James, James, okay. I, could I, could I ask a question about them? Japan? Um, you brought up how, how they yeah, raped Brian. hundreds of thousands of people, right? They did. Okay. Um, and they that did. now, now is is the assessment that since they were bombed and that U.S. soldiers stayed there, that it became a better country mm -hmm. because of that, and the rapes stopped. Is that is that the assessment? Those are two different things, but the rape sure as hell did stop when one. Okay, they but that, that's where I, that's where I disagree with you because raping, Japan raping has a very serious home. issue of a rape culture, and it's very prevalent inside a lot of its Japan media. Japan and rape culture now. But but you said you the problem was that they culture. were rapists. That's why they deserved getting bombed. I, I they're still. Th I didn't say that they deserved to get bombed. I said that was a decision Truman made to end the war, and it worked. So you so you don't he, he think they did that? Yeah, it's always shifting. They were the already goal goal to end the war. I'm not shifting it. Stephanie, he is. Don't you are. You love to talk about something and then and then <laughs> claim that we're not letting you respond, and then you change the subject, man. I didn't make the claim. I didn't change the subject. Listen to the record. You never answered that question, Brian James. Up. Why and is it so it's important a, it's to you to convince people at this point? Rape stop, but rape did, hasn't stopped. Rape culture is huge there. And it's I, not I love important. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Let me say let's take it, let's take it up prefer, on another show, prefer, James. Thank you so much for the call. I, I, I pre do appreciate it. And, oh you know, boy. he gets lots of opportunities to talk. Yeah, he so. does. Yeah, that was a conversation. Your call, 855-450-FREE share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. All you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make Make a difference in the world, and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com.
Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M-E-M-E, -E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value, and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't Tread on Meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. DontTreadOnMeme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live! 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can give us a call and talk about whatever is on your mind on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. You can also go get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Not better... Where are you going to get a better offer than this here on a uh, Sunday evening? Go get a free pound of some of the best of the best coffee. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% grade Arabica. We're not just sending you a standard old store-bought coffee here. This is delicious, organic, shade-grown coffee. And if you continue to get your coffee through the subscription program there at uh, coffee.freetalklive.com, you'll be helping people around the world because Free Talk Live makes it possible for, uh, you know, teaming up with uh, BuzzBox, it's, it's possible now for us to give one microloan for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com on average every 10 people. And, you know, so doing, we're able to provide people the thing that they need to start their own business and really pull themselves up by their bootstraps, whether it's some restaurant equipment or a little loan to get their sandwich cart going or a sewing machine to be able to make shoes or a plow to be able to do their fields or a bicycle. I don't know what they need. They know what they need. And if we can provide them that, there's a much better chance of 
them pulling themselves up out of poverty than just sort of throwing free money at them. That's why I'm uh, in. That's why I love Buzzbox, and you can go get your coffee there and help make other people's lives better at coffee.freetalklive.com. Let's go to the phones. Uh, Liberty Phoenix. Liberty Phoenix, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Um, I just wanted to ask Brian if he's had a chance to uh, read the book uh, Galaxium by Matt Bellotti. No, I have not. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I just got, the, uh, I just got it today. It's, it's kind of written in a, uh, a screenplay format. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and it's based on basically a, uh, a future kind of like New World Order. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Brave New World. Where... Okay, this Brave New World would be Aldeus Huxley, very popular book from the early 20th century, uh, where every like from when you're born to even how you're born, everything's controlled by the state. How's that sound? Yeah, it's it's it it it, it was similar to that in the fact that the main character is genetically engineered to right. just be completely controlled. Okay. Um, the majority, I think, the rest of the society kind of has a little bit more control over their free will, but it's set in space. Um, the 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 main character is a, a pilot, and uh, it was just it was just really great because they there's in it there's obviously a, a false flag attack. There, uh, the main empire is coming up to this uh, this new world that this new set of people that they've encountered, and uh, they're called the Freemasons. And uh, Free, the, the Freemasons, <laughs> something to that effect. Sounds Freemason, familiar. Yeah. Freemason, yeah. Freemason, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> that's like that's like the Freemason Club where they serve mimosas every yeah. time they meet. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a good mimosa. Freemasons. <laughs> so the uh, the Eucerians they want to buy the Galaxium that the Freemasons have uh, in their in their supplies because that's how people travel at light speeds in this universe. Okay. And so they they won't do it. It's theirs. They don't want to sell it. They need it for themselves. So what does these Eucerians do? They do a false flag attack and destroy their own diplomatic ship. Um, but they use the main character in order to um, in order to commit the the deed and actually take out the thing by controlling him. And uh, he's completely aware of it at the time, but the uh, a security agent from Eucyria has a little, you know, mind-wiping device and uh, is able to actually take control of his body and, and make him do whatever he wants. So he makes kind of a sleeper agent of some kind. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, uh, what was what, what's the takeaway for you with this? Like, how do you think it, I mean, obviously it really resonated with you. Well, yeah, I really liked it. I mean, like I said, it's uh, it was written in a... Um, uh, a, a, a screenplay format, and I'd love to see it made into a movie. Sure, honest. but I mean, you think like it has a really great liberty message? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, they yeah, it's the amazing. Science fiction is really one of those venues where one of those genres that actually lets you kind of get away with saying anything, even when you know people might not even initially be interested in subjects like liberty, you know, and anarchy or whatever. Yeah, it's it's definitely got a, a complete. Uh, you know, anarchist libertarian um, uh, theme to it. The the free motions meet, are basically. Did you meet Matt Bellotti at uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival? I did. Yeah, I certainly yeah. did. Yeah, he actually gave me a ride back home to uh, Illinois. Yeah, he's uh, he's a good guy, and um, I'm I'm interested in, in checking out his book too. Yeah, I need to check this out. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for thanks for calling and hipping us to it, uh, Liberty Phoenix. Appreciate the call. Thanks a lot, guys. And if anybody wants to make it into a movie, boy, let's let's make that happen. It sounds intriguing already. There you go. Yeah. 855-450 free. Uh, I thought we had another call here, but uh, apparently we didn't. So uh, You know, something with with, uh, with science fiction that is really interesting, like I, I think a lot of people expect it to predict the future really, really well. Uh, it's not often that it actually does that, but I think when it kind of does, it's more of a case where really it hits you over the head <laughs> And like you're right about for, you know, something like that to happen. I know a lot of people are expecting a new world order scenario of some kind. So, uh, yeah, it's it's intriguing to get a future look sometimes. Let's go to Krister calling in on Skype. We've had a lot of Skype calls this evening. They always sound better. Yeah, I love them. Krister? Hi, guys. I, I heard you were talking about uh, World War One. Do you Would you like to uh, get a – I could fill you in a little, little bit about the blanks here. Oh, sure. If you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. The uh, story about the uh, Serbian, uh, you know, the prince... Uh, Archduke uh, Ferdinand. Uh, yeah. 
all of that, you know, is just a smoke and mirrors because uh, uh, to understand why World War One started, you have to go back to the British Empire being the total, you know, dominant factor force in the world and being having, uh, be, um, you know, before Germany became Germany, it was uh, it was called uh, the um, Prussian Empire. Oh, Prussia. Russian, uh, uh, com, you know, com, com, it was several uh, kingdoms uh, who were uh, like a union. Yep. And, and what happened was they were educated soldiers in their army and they had never actually, never, uh, I, I was say, not going to say never, but they were pretty darn, um, you know, successful in the battlefield. Now, what happened was uh, Napoleon came up uh, in a battle with the Prussian army and won and they were shocked because the fact was uh, the uh, French army was made up from uh, peasants, uneducated, illiterate peasants mm. and the Prussian army had all these uh, educated, uh, you know, uh, army, uh, what we call the soldiers. So <clears throat> they were in a shock and they had to find out what happened. Exactly. So they uh, uh, set up a committee, or not a committee, but one guy who, who, who was to find out. I, I can't remember his name now. Okay, I, here we have a break. Yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm interested in finding out what uh, what, what you think uh, led to it. So just hold the line if you would. Um, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Looks like a World War One History Night here on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Final half hour of Free Talk Live's Live Sunday edition with Mark. And Brian. And Stephanie. You know, I will be away next week. It's going to be you guys here doing whatever it is you people do. You're going to some lame political dinner. That's right. The NHLA Liberty Dinner 2014. You can uh, go to NH liberty.org slash dinner 2014 and uh, come see me hand out awards are you going to be speaking or something you're like the (laughs) mc wow (laughs) yeah i'm I'm emceeing i (sighs) make fun of people and uh you know give inspirational oh you're actually good at that i i am i am pretty good at that (laughs) (laughs) i'm sorry everybody please go to this This i'm not gonna be amazing (laughs) i'm not not the best mc but i'm not the worst mc yeah well i I meant like putting people down yeah yeah well you know they they need a little ribbing you know you're gonna get the best political activist of the year award you need a little ribbing in the process they got the bull with the horns. Indeed. Um, that is nhliberty.org slash dinner2014. Love to see you out there. And let's go back to Krister. He was uh, on the line talking about uh, what he believed the causes of World War One were. And I've, uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested in how he's going to bring this around. Krister? Yeah, listen, I'm I'm really tired. I'm sorry if I'm... Uh, yeah, no, it's like 4 a.m. there, right? Yeah, 3.30 yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Anyways, um, the uh, happen <clears throat> they ha- they happened to lose the war against uh, Napoleon's uh, peasants, and so they uh, set up an investigation to find out what 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 actually happened. So, this guy I can't for my life remember his name now. He found out that there is one crucial element in the um, education of the soldiers, those peasants, and that that they were <laughs> taught to f- uh, follow orders blindly. Uh, not question authority. Mm-hmm. And when the Germans understood this, or the um, Prussians, Prussians yeah. they immediately set up an education system that would, uh, of course, be sell- sold to the people, like everybody needs to learn to write and read and, and, uh, and arithmetics. But uh, the, the meaning of it all was to get uh, obedient soldiers to the, to the army. And as a side effect of that, they also got obedient um, workers for the factories uh, you know, and that sort of thing. Yeah, this is the Prussian school model. Which, yeah, we're still dealing with this. Yeah, aren't absolutely. We? Yeah. That's what the United States, uh, you know, public school system is based on. Um, you're absolutely right on the, this, Christer. Is that not only were they teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic, but they were teaching uh, you know, obedience. Yeah. And I mean, think about it: bells, 
Really? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna get a Pad Love's dog. <laughs> you're gonna have people be able to use the bathroom and get up and move around on bells. I, I mean, you know, that's that's really that's not and that's not all. I mean, it's really designed from the top down. You have to for the big institutions that we have, schools the way they are. You have to have obedience. You can't have people learning their own uh, way and learning to how to be free people. You have to have obedience. Mm. Christer and. Yep. And as an as a result of that, the um, um, you know the flourishing um, industrialism it, 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 it exploded in Germany, and um, so the British Empire got totally over you know uh, overrun by the uh, uh, German uh, manufacturing industry, and they were producing um, a lot cheaper and at, at a higher quality and better, you know, faster and everything. And they also were a, a total threat because they ha- they were planning to set up a railroad down to the Middle East or, or I can't remember, um, Turkey, passing Turkey down to, um, I think it's Iraq. I, I, you you know, can I, say I've it was through the Ottoman the Empire because that's safe. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. And... Uh, the British, of course, uh, understood that this is a force they need to, um, you know, it's a, it's a threat to their uh, global empire. And I'm telling you that the uh, Prince Ferdinand uh, issue there is it's just a, you know, a side um, a red herring to make you believe that. Uh, but but the true. Um, I don't think, Christer, I don't think anybody really believes it's the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand was actually the reason that these countries went to war. Most of them believe it has to do with, uh, with you know, different countries being upset with each other. I think you're giving the reason that they are upset with each other, and I think you are you sound right. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'd have to look into it, but I love the explanation. Um, and that they had all these alliances and things kind of fell down that way. I would like to point out that it's, uh, you know, the U.S. stepping into war. World War One caused the lopsided Treaty of Versailles. If these countries would have duked it out to the fifteenth round, and uh, you know, would have been a decision at the end, it would have been an entirely different treaty. And let's not forget that the U.S. paid Russia, along with uh, Britain and France, paid Russia to stay in the war, causing the the only party, the Bolsheviks, that didn't support. Um, the, the, the war to gain prominence. So you could claim that the U.S.'s involvement, I think it's relatively safe to claim, the U.S.'s involvement in World War I caused both uh, war, the World War II and the European theater, and it caused um, the, the, the rise of the Soviet Empire, plus probably every other communist country after that. So the conflicts in Vietnam, the conflict in Korea, all had to do with Woodrow Wilson breaking weak and uh, acquiescing to the Republicans that wanted to fight. I would thanks, agree with that. Thanks so much, uh, Krista. I know that uh, one of the favorite things of Republicans to do these days is to say, every war that's been started in American history started by Democrats. And uh, there's... I mean, there's a lot of evidence for the, you know, the, sort of the presidents at those times tend to be Democrats, but... That doesn't mean that that was the only reason the people went to war. You can't go go to war without Congress. No, right. I mean, and and the Amer- Americans at the time knew this. There was a huge anti-war movement uh, in the early part of the 20th century. In the you know, for World War One. I. I mean, just tons of people. I mean, as far as I understand it, lining the streets saying you can't do this. Uh, they knew, but people went ahead and went to war anyway. Let's go to David in oh, Iowa. David. You're on Free Talk Live. Can you hear me? <laughs> what made you think it was David? Oh, I'm trying to read it the way it's written here. And Caller. <laughs> going once. Uh, yes, speak. Uh, yes, hello, uh, hello, Talk Live. Um, uh, today I want to uh, talk about this, uh, this book I read, um, by Hiro Akamura. I am... Um, it is a title, the uh, Amakaka uh, Ryo Hiromeki. And, um, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Say, <laughs> Not one bit. And I want to say, Happy Ramadan! 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can. Tell it would have been funnier if we could understand it better. Yeah. Right. I, I can tell you that the board op is putting up with no nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't drop that guy. Like, he's like, I have a finger of lightning fast. <laughs> dropped, dropped. I tell you, you and your mungkaka. <laughs> <Out of here. laughs> so, Free Talk Live is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're one of the few shows on the largest syndicate in, uh, I think, the world, uh, GCN, Genesis Communications Network, as far as shows put out. So mm-hmm. they have these board ops in there, and these guys are dealing with big shows and little shows, but these shows... We're the only ones that really sort of work with our uh, our, our show uh, clock, or the, not the clock, but the, the phone software. We're the only ones that are sort of allowed to put people on the air and take them off and that kind of thing. And that really works well with what we do. But these guys have to work the phones constantly. So they really do have, you know, they, their neuromuscular connection to that drop button is good. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to all the board ops there at uh, at GCN. Yeah, I mean, and they got to get a feeling because over time you can get that feel for when it's going to sure. be a crank caller. Uh, and and they, they just they've got to know better than even we do, or at least better, far better than I do. Yeah, I think you've got to go light on the crank. Um, you can't yeah. go heavy on the crank right. here on Free Talk Live because. You know, we're we're happy to talk to you about silly stuff. I thought the one of the one of the best ones we had, and and you know, was some time ago, was this lady who called in and just like, "What are you guys gonna do during the zombie apocalypse?" And she's not really can- cranking us; she's just asking a silly question, right? Yeah. And yeah, we worked that thing for a segment. Absolutely, <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what I've got uh, going for the zombie apocalypse. Not a problem. <laughs> the first thing on your left, reach out. What do you have? A pair of headphones. We're screwed. <laughs> Free talk live eight fifty five four fifty. Free. That's 855-450-3733. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You know Bella Wood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bella Wood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bella Wood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bella Wood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and Black Forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Final segment of the live Sunday show here on Free Talk Live. Uh, I'll give you the number real quick. Might be able to squeeze you in. No guarantees. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you know, frankly, it doesn't matter because we will be back in 21 short hours. Well, 21 and a quarter short hours. Um, We do a live program seven days a week here on Free Talk Live. It's uh, 7 to 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday. So you can call in anytime if you, for whatever reason, can't get your call in 9.30 9.30 on the evening. Just wait for 21 hours and call in about it. And if you go into withdrawal after Free Talk Live is over, there's a whole network um, called the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM where you can listen to other Liberty podcasts or go to archives.freetalklive.com and you can hear old Free Talk Lives. Indeed. Um, Here, here's some of those internet-only Sunday shows we from like created, 2010, right? <laughs> we kind of created LRN.FM for the purpose of having something to listen to ourselves. Um, there isn't anything out there for the Liberty lovers to listen to. LRN intends to bring all this stuff together. Together, or at least you know as much as of it we can get together. And you guys have uh, you, you guys have your own shows too. Please, uh, yeah, absolutely. Pimp, pimp uh, them. <laughs> uh, well, I would love to pimp. Sovereign. Can I pimp yours and you pimp pimp ours? Okay, go for okay, it. Okay, I'm going to pimp Brian's. Brian does an awesome technology podcast. Every week I look forward to it coming out. It's one of the few podcasts that I listen to every single episode. It's called Sovereign Tech, just like Brian's name, S-O-V-R-Y-N tech.com. And if you listen to the most recent episode that's out now, you can hear us having an audio threesome with Paige Peterson from MadeSafe. I, I love the sound of that already. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> that, that doesn't entice It was that people. good. There's there's no video, but boy, it was that good. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but uh, if you, you know, not to say that that's what, ha- what was happening, but Stephanie and I have a show called Sex and Science Hour, and that's on the Let's Talk Bitcoin network. Of Indeed. course, you can find that on letstalkbitcoin.com. Uh, it comes out about every week. And, approximately uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a fun hour-long show where where stephanie gets to talk about her favorite things sex and science there you go <laughs> and let's go to oh we got another skype call we had uh lost our phone call there let's go to skype it's nathan nathan you're on free talk live what's on your mind i guess my definition of celebritarian was wrong i thought it was anyone on lrn <laughs> <laughs> it's I, a pretty low bar <laughs> to get on lrn right yeah i think us. uh I think there are a few more besides that, but, uh, you know, certainly they... There are some that aren't on LRN, right? Yeah, indeed. There, there, there are some people that aren't on LRN that are celebritarians in my mind. A celebritarian is a, a libertarian that is, uh, for whatever reason, you know, liked, you know, widely. Yeah, that's and, pretty uh, rare part, in liberty. say part of it is, uh, you know, some people think that it's about attention grabbing. And uh, about that, I wanted to ask Mark if you've seen the Truth About series on the uh, Mala News channel. I think I saw the truth about something on Mullen News Channel, like one thing, well, yes. He's been doing like a series. Oh, the, the, truth the truth about truth slavery, of, yes. Yeah, well, it's a series, and it's usually a truth about, and then it'll be some person like Karl Marx. I mean, the latest one is, did Martin Luther associate with the KKK? And uh, Martin Luther uh, King Jr.? The general right. theme of these seems to be that uh, if you're going to advocate moral propositions, then you need to be a moral person. So, for example, in, Car- in the Marx one, he talked about how Marx never had an honest job and uh, 
uh, exploited his workers. And in the Maya Angelou one, he talks about how she personally had bad relationships in her life because of uh, abuse that she suffered. And I don't know if I can get on board with this idea that that you have these famous, I guess you could call them celebrities, they're dead celebrities, but they're kind of like these celebrities in culture like Marx or Martin Luther King that people look up to and just kind of, I don't know, tearing them down, I guess would be one way to look at it. Like what Sometimes after they that? die, he makes a video about Oh, them. yeah, yeah. The, right after Maya Angelou died was when he did the truth about Maya Angelou. So. Well, he's but I, smart in getting uh, the momentum of, uh, you know, whatever, you know, he, he generally picks things that are either evergreen popular or popular at that moment in order to get more views. And, you know, that's a smart move. Yeah, I guess I just can't get on board with the idea that a person, it feels like an ad hominem to say that a person's ideas are invalid just because they had moral faults in their life. Does like it, is that the claim? Because I didn't hear those, when, the, the one truth about that's that the I heard. General, that, yeah, that's the, the general the, theme that goes out throughout these truth about ones. And there was a video where he explicitly argued for that. I, I don't have it with. I yeah, don't have he, it his point I've heard often in these videos is to crush heroes. Well, uh, I think we should crush heroes. I don't think that there's yeah. any... Yeah, any... and calling out hypocrisy doesn't hurt either, especially when everybody thinks of these figures as like can do right. no wrong, o right? Okay, but hold on. But you're crushing them to whose standard? You know, his? Anyone's. Yeah, but uh, and not anyone's. It, it, I don't think it'd necessarily be universal because he has opinions on things that may not necessarily, you know, what's what's uh, good for the goose isn't necessarily good I'm for sure the... somebody's done the truth about Stefan Molyneux video. He, no, he, he has, has done it himself. Shit. He okay. did a video called The Truth About Stefan Molyneux. Right, I mean, and, and he should. I, I have no problem with hero crushing. I do have a problem um, with... The, the one thing I saw the truth about suggested that there were far more, like, Irish people enslaved than black people. Um, if I'd have to look at it, and I, wow, I find that to be difficult to imagine. Um, I did do some looking into it, and certainly there were Irish indentured servants. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I don't think you had that sort of um, ongoing uh, generational slavery. Mm. But you know, it's it was interesting. I, it it made me think about something differently. However, I didn't feel like I walked away with the truth about. You know, often, too, like when people really make a point of like calling out hypocrisy, I mean, everyone has done things in their life that they're not proud of. And there has to be some process of redemption. You know, like if everyone I've sure. done hypocritical things, I've done crappy things. Yeah, the hurt truth other about people. Mark Edge is going to be a painful video. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone <laughs> has different facets to them. Like hopefully people try to live morally and they try to restitute victims if they've harmed anyone. Mm -hmm. Uh but I don't know. I, I don't what I don't hear a lot from him is like, what is the process of redemption? You know, if somebody does do something wrong, maybe some of these famous people haven't even tried to make up for the hypocritical things that they well, did. That's, that's a good point, Stephanie, because I actually think it's uh, it gives Mark more credibility when he talks about, you know, that that ad spot about learning about morality and it bringing good things to your life because he actually has experience that, you know, supports that point. So I think if you if you're a quote unquote hypocrite, that can actually be a source of credibility because you know you've actually done the moral things you're talking about, and you know you've actually seen a change in your own life because of it. I find that people are very forgiving um, generally in this world. I mean, I am for those who listen to the show on a regular basis. Um, for those that don't, I'm sorry for the shock you're going to get here. I'm a convicted murderer, and that could be. I've got to thank. You know, I've got to thank uh, God, good luck, or whomever I thank uh, every every morning I get up for the great life I have. When I have definitely done bad things in my past, I, I didn't kill anybody, but uh, you know, at the same time, I'm a convicted felon. There's a lot of people out there that th they begrudge me having success by the simple fact that I was in prison. You know, hey, how come I can't have that level of success? And well, there are also people who even who call into the show who basically believe that you should just shrivel up and die and not have any friends or relationships. Right. You should I just kill have... yourself because you've done something that's totally wrong. There's no way you can make up for it. Right. I don't know what exactly, you know, if, if you, you know, if you believe whatever the stories you read in the paper or whatever about me um, and you choose to believe that even so, what difference does it make? I mean, have I, can I not be, is there no process for redemption is yeah. really the question you asked. And, and I think that there has to be. Yeah. And I, I and think people and people really offer it.
Yeah, I, and I think some of these videos are incredibly unfair. I think sometimes he engages in, with especially with the Truth About series, um, expecting cavemen to drive cars. You know, I, I I think a lot of times. What do you mean by that? What I mean is is that, it's that a caveman has no idea how to drive a car. And I'm not saying that people a hundred years ago or even thousands of years ago are dumber than they are now. If anything, we're dumber. Um, but my my point is is that like just some of these ideas they were not they they did not hit the fore. They weren't thought of uh, you know enough. Whatever I mean, standing on the shoulders of giants. This is how science gets built. Philosophy is a science, apparently, according to him. Soft science. And so sure, <laughs> but all this same it would get built on giants and so then to expect to hold their feet to the fire of a time of an understanding that they couldn't that i sometimes wonder i'm not going to say for sure they couldn't possibly have i think is incredibly unfair call it what it is that's fine but to come out and, and just like demoralize and, and attack these people like ad hominem like you said I, I don't know i think that might be bad form well i think that um when when you're looking at like for instance the founding fathers Obviously, slavery was something that has existed for thousands of years prior to the writing of the Declaration of Independence and uh, the U.S. Constitution. I think it's fair to point out that it's hypocritical, but that we have decided we've we've discerned through a couple of hundred years that it's hypocritical. Not that these people were necessarily bad because they right. were doing it what everybody else was doing. However, I would like to point out the fact that uh, Jesus didn't mention anything about slavery in the Bible. He's God and supposed to have the foresight. So I think that that's the one instance that it's sort of fair to to, to do this. Uh, you know, yeah, this. But, but look, Murray Rothbard did not figure out the iPhone. And I think that's that's what equating to what Stefan Molyneux does with these people. Eight. Uh, I'm giving the number. Uh, thanks so much for the we're call, done. Nathan. And he's already hung up, apparently. The show <laughs> he himself. knows the show's over. Yeah, you can uh, check us out in the meantime at, uh, at freetalklive.com. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, did you get my email? Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 4th, 2014. Gold is trading today around $1,313. Silver at $20.92 and Bitcoin at $624.43. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Online, accountableauthority.com. In the news, the Supreme Court has decided to review a case involving American multinational corporation Halliburton and former subsidiary KBR for billing the U.S. government for services allegedly never completed. 
Benjamin Carter, a former employee with KBR's Reverse Osmosis Water Purification Unit in Iraq, accused the military contractors of falsely billing the government for water purification services on military bases in Iraq. Carter stated Halliburton and KBR made false statements in order to get fraudulent claims paid by the government. A number of Internet service and communications providers have joined up with British civil rights group Privacy International in a lawsuit filed Wednesday against the British GCHQ. Privacy International partnered with U.S. companies Rise Up and May 1st, People Link, the U.K.'s Green Net, the Dutch Greenhost, Zimbabwe's Mango, South Korea's Jinbonet, and Germany's Chaos Computer Club to sue the British government over the Tempora program and the NSA's PRISM program. According to documents leaked by whistleblower Edward Snowden, Tempora involves tapping major internet cables around the globe. All providers involved in the suit cater specifically to activists and organizers. The city of Houston is launching a partnership with local business owner John Vlong to build a new grocery store in a southeast Houston food desert. On Monday, Houston Mayor Anise Parker, City Council Member Stephen Costello and Dwight Boykins, and the Houston 